Portugal Portuguese Puto Al, officially the Portuguese Republic Portuguese República Portuguesa Pu Beta Lic Puto Es, is a country located mostly on the Iberian Peninsula in southwestern Europe. It is the westernmost sovereign state of mainland Europe. It is bordered to the west and south by the Atlantic Ocean and to the north and east by Spain. Its territory also includes the Atlantic archipelagos of the Azores and Madeira, both autonomous regions with their own regional governments. Portugal is the oldest state on the Iberian Peninsula and one of the oldest in Europe, its territory having been continuously settled, invaded and fought over since prehistoric times. The pre-Celts, Celts, Carthaginians and Romans were followed by the invasions of the Visigoths and Subi-Germanic peoples. Portugal as a country was established during the Christian Reconquista against the Moors who had invaded the Iberian Peninsula in 711 AD. Despite attempts at independence since its foundation as a county in 868, only after the Battle of São Mamede in 1128, where Portuguese forces led by Afonso Henriques defeated forces led by his mother, Teresa of Portugal, the county of Portugal affirmed its sovereignty and Henriques styled himself Prince of Portugal. He would later be proclaimed King of Portugal at the Battle of Arique in 1139 and was recognized as such, by neighboring kingdoms, on the Treaty of Zamora, in 1143. In the 15th and 16th centuries, Portugal established the first global empire, becoming one of the world's major economic, political, and military powers. During this period, today referred to as the Age of Discovery, Portuguese explorers pioneered maritime exploration, notably under royal patronage of Prince Henry the Navigator and King John II, with such notable voyages as Bartolomeu Dias sailing beyond the Cape of Good Hope Cabo da Boa Esperanza 1488, Vasco da Gama's discovery of the sea route to India 1497 and the European discovery of Brazil 1500. During this time Portugal monopolized the spice trade, and the empire expanded with military campaigns in Asia. However, events such as the destruction of Lisbon in a 1755 earthquake, the Industrial Revolution, the Seven Years' War, the country's occupation during the Napoleonic Wars, and the independence of Brazil 1822, erased to an extent Portugal's prior opulence. After the 1910 revolution deposed the monarchy, the democratic but unstable Portuguese First Republic was established, later being superseded by the Estado Novo right-wing authoritarian regime. Democracy was restored after the Carnation Revolution in 1974, ending the Portuguese colonial war. Shortly after, independence was granted to almost all its overseas territories. The handover of Macau to China in 1999 marked the end of what can be considered the longest lived colonial empire. Portugal has left a profound cultural and architectural influence across the globe, a legacy of 300 million Portuguese speakers, and many Portuguese based creoles. A member of the United Nations and the European Union, Portugal was also one of the founding members of NATO, the Eurozone, the OECD, and the community of Portuguese language countries. Portugal is a developed country with a high income advanced economy and high living standards. It is the fourth most peaceful country in the world, and its state is the 15th most stable one, maintained under a unitary semi-presidential republican form of government. Additionally, the country ranks highly in terms of democracy 10th, social progress 20th, prosperity 25th, press freedom 14th, moral freedom 3rd, LGBTI rights 7th in Europe, ease of doing business 29th, and road network 2nd. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The word Portugal derives from the Roman Celtic place name Portus Cale. Portus, the Latin word for port or harbour, Cala or Caia was the name of a Celtic goddess, in Scotland she is known as Beira, and also the name of an early settlement located at the mouth of the Douro River present-day Vila Nova de Gaia which flows into the Atlantic Ocean in the north of what is now Portugal. At the time the land of a specific people was frequently named after its deity. Those names are the origins of the Gal in Portugal and Galicia. Incidentally, the meaning of kale or kaye is also a derivation of the Celtic word for port which would confirm very old links to pre-Roman, Celtic languages which compare to today's Irish kala or Scottish kala, both meaning port. Some French scholars believe it may have come from Portus Gallus, the port of the Gauls or Celts. 
Around 200 BC, the Romans took the Iberian Peninsula from the Carthaginians during the Second Punic War, and in the process conquered Kale and renamed it Portus Kale, Port of Kale incorporating it to the province of Gaulicia with capital in Bracara Augusta modern-day Braga, Portugal. During the Middle Ages, the region around Portus Kale became known by the Subi and Visigoths as Portucale. The name Portucale evolved into Portugal during the 7th and 8th centuries, and by the 9th century, that term was used extensively to refer to the region between the rivers Douro and Minho. By the 11th and 12th centuries, Portugal, Portugalia or Portivigalia was already referred to as Portugal. History Prehistory The early history of Portugal is shared with the rest of the Iberian Peninsula located in southwestern Europe. The name of Portugal derives from the joined Romano-Celtic name Portus Cale. The region was settled by pre-Celts and Celts, giving origin to peoples like the Galaeci, Lusitanians, Celtici and Sinets, visited by Phoenicians, ancient Greeks and Carthaginians, incorporated in the Roman Republic dominions as Lusitania and part of Gaiaecia, after 45 BC until 298 AD. The region of present-day Portugal was inhabited by Neanderthals and then by Homo sapiens, who roamed the border-less region of the northern Iberian Peninsula. These were subsistence societies that, although they did not establish prosperous settlements, did form organized societies. Neolithic Portugal experimented with domestication of herding animals, the raising of some cereal crops and fluvial or marine fishing. It is believed by some scholars that early in the first millennium BC, several waves of Celts invaded Portugal from Central Europe and intermarried with the local populations, forming different tribes. Modern archaeology and research shows a Portuguese route to the Celts in Portugal and elsewhere. During that period and until the Roman invasions, the Castro culture, a variation of the Urnfield culture aka culture, was prolific in Portugal and modern Galicia. This culture, together with the surviving elements of the Atlantic megalithic culture and the contributions that come from the more western Mediterranean cultures, end up in what has been called the cultura castrella or Castro culture. This denomination refers to the characteristic Celtic populations called Duin, Duin or Don in Gaelic and that the Romans called Castrae in their chronicles. Based on the Roman chronicles about the Calaeci peoples, along with the Labor Gabala Aran narrations and the interpretation of the abundant archaeological remains throughout the northern half of Portugal and Galicia, it is possible to infer that theirs was a matriarchal society, with a military and religious aristocracy probably of feudal type. The figures of maximum authority were the chieftain chefe tribal, of military type and with authority in his castro or clan, and the druid, main referring medical and religious that could be common to several castros. The Celtic cosmogony remained homogeneous due to the ability of the druids to meet in councils with the druids of other areas, which ensured the transmission of knowledge and the most significant events. The first documentary references to Castro society are provided by chroniclers of Roman military campaigns such as Strabo, Herodotus or Pliny the Elder, among others about the social organization, and describing the inhabitants of these territories, the Galaeci of northern Portugal as a group of barbarians who spend the day fighting and the night eating, drinking and dancing under the moon. Other similar tribes, and chief among them were the Lusitanians, with the core area of these people lying in inland central Portugal. Numerous other related tribes existed, such as the Celtici of Alentejo, and the Sinets or Coni of the Algarve. Among the tribes or subdivisions were the Bracari, Salerni, Equesi, Grovi, Interamasai, Luna, Luenki, Limici, Narbasi, Nematati, Pashori, Quikerni, Serbi, Tamagani, Topoli, Turduli, Turduli Vatiris, Turdalorum Opida, Tarati, and Zoe. A few small, semi permanent, commercial coastal settlements such as Tavira, were also founded in the Algarve region by Phoenicians Carthaginians. Roman Lusitania and Gaiaecia Romans first invaded the Iberian Peninsula in 219 BC. The Carthaginians, Rome's adversary in the Punic Wars, were expelled from their coastal colonies. During the last days of Julius Caesar, almost the entire peninsula was annexed to the Roman Republic. 
The Roman conquest of what is now part of Portugal took almost 200 years and took many lives of young soldiers and the lives of those who were sentenced to a certain death in the slave mines when not sold as slaves to other parts of the empire. It suffered a severe setback in 155 BC, when a rebellion began in the north. The Lusitanians and other native tribes, under the leadership of Viriathus, wrested control of all of western Iberia. Rome sent numerous legions and its best generals to Lusitania to quell the rebellion, but to no avail, the Lusitanians kept conquering territory. The Roman leaders decided to change their strategy. They bribed Viriathus's allies to kill him. In 139 BC, Viriathus was assassinated, and Totilus became leader. Rome installed a colonial regime. The complete Romanization of Lusitania only took place in the Visigothic era. In 27 BC, Lusitania gained the status of Roman province. Later, a northern province of Lusitania was formed, known as Gaiaisia, with capital in Bracara Augusta, today's Braga. There are still many ruins of Castros hill forts all over modern Portugal and remains of Castro culture. Numerous Roman sites are scattered around present-day Portugal, some urban remains are quite large, like Conimbriga and Mirobriga. The former, beyond being one of the largest Roman settlements in Portugal, is also classified as a national monument. Conimbriga lies 16 kilometers (9.9 miles) from Coimbra, which by its turn was the ancient Amenium. The site also has a museum that displays objects found by archaeologists during their excavations. Several works of engineering, such as baths, temples, bridges, roads, circus, theaters, and layman's homes, are preserved throughout the country. Coins, some of which coined in Lusitanian land, as well as numerous pieces of ceramics, were also found. Contemporary historians include Paulus Orosius c. 375-418 and Hydatius c. 400-469, Bishop of Aquae Flavi, who reported on the final years of the Roman rule and arrival of the Germanic tribes. <laughs> Germanic kingdoms, Subi and Visigoths In the early 5th century, Germanic tribes, namely the Subi and the Vandals Selingi and Hasdingi, together with their allies, the Sarmatians and Alans invaded the Iberian Peninsula where they would form their kingdom. The kingdom of the Subi was the Germanic post-Roman kingdom, established in the former Roman provinces of Gaiaisia Lusitania. Fifth century vestiges of Alan settlements were found in Alenker from Old Germanic Alan Kirk, Temple of the Alans, Coimbra and Lisbon, about 410 and during the 6th century it became a formally declared kingdom of the Subi, where King Hermeric made a peace treaty with the Galaetians before passing his domains to Richila, his son. In 448 Rachila died, leaving the state in expansion to Rikiar. After the defeat against the Visigoths, the Suebian kingdom was divided, with Franton and Aguilfo ruling simultaneously. Both reigned from 456 to 457, the year in which Maldras 457 to 459 reunified the kingdom to finish being assassinated after a failed Roman Visigothic conspiracy. Although the conspiracy did not achieve its true purposes, the Suebian kingdom was again divided between two kings. Frumar, Frumario 459 to 463, and Remismundo, son of Maldras, 459 to 469, who would re-reunify his father's kingdom in 463 and that he would be forced to adopt Arianism in 465 due to the Visigoth influence. By the year 500, the Visigothic kingdom had been installed in Iberia, based in Toledo and advancing westwards. They became a threat to the Suebian rule. After the death of Remismund in 469 a dark period set in, where virtually all written texts and accounts disappear. This period lasted until 550. The only thing known about this period is that Theodemund most probably ruled the Suebians. The Dark Period ended with the reign of Cariorico 550-559, who reinstalled Catholicism in 550. He was succeeded by Theodomar or Theodomish Theodomiro 559-570, during whose reign the First Council of Braga 561 was held. The councils represented an advance in the organization of the territory Parishum Suvorum Suebian parish and the Christianization of the pagan population de Correction Rusticorum under the auspices of St. Martin of Braga, São Martinho de Braga. 
After the death of Teodomiro, Miro was his successor. During his reign, the Second Council of Braga was held. The Visigothic Civil War began in 577. Miro intervened. Later in 583 he also organized an unsuccessful expedition to reconquer Seville. During the return from this failed operation the Miro died. In the Suabian kingdom many internal struggles continued to take place. Iborico Eurico, 583 was dethroned by Andica Adica 584-585, who failed to prevent the Visigothic invasion led by Leovigildo. The Visigothic invasion, completed in 585, turned the once rich and fertile kingdom of the Subi into the sixth province of the Gothic kingdom. Leovigild was crowned king of Gaiaicia, Hispania and Gallia Narbonensis. For the next 300 years and by the year 700, the entire Iberian peninsula was ruled by the Visigoths. Under the Visigoths, Gaiaicia was a well-defined space governed by a doge of its own. Doges at this time were related to the monarchy acted as princes in all matters. Both governors Wamba and Widiza Vidiza acted as doge and would end up being kings in Toledo. These two became known as the Vitizians, who headquartered in the northwest and called on the Arab invaders from the south to be their allies in the struggle for power in 711. King Rodaic Rodrigo was killed while opposing this invasion, thus becoming the last Visigothic king of Iberia. From the various Germanic groups who settled in western Iberia, the Subi left the strongest lasting cultural legacy in what is today Portugal, Galicia, and Asturias. According to Dan Stanislavski, the Portuguese way of living in regions north of the Tagus is mostly inherited from the Subi, in which small farms prevail, distinct from the large properties of southern Portugal. Bracara, Augusta, the modern city of Braga and former capital of Gaiaicia, became the capital of the Subi. Orosius, at that time resident in Hispania, shows a rather pacific initial settlement, the newcomers working their lands or serving as bodyguards of the locals. Another Germanic group that accompanied the Subi and settled in Gaiaicia were the Buri. They settled in the region between the rivers Cavado and Hamam, in the area known as Terras de Boro lands of the Buri. Topic: <laughs> Islamic period and the Reconquista. Today's modern-day continental Portugal, along with most of modern Spain, was part of Al-Andalus between 711-1249, following the Umayyad Caliphate conquest of the Iberian Peninsula in 711. This occupation lasted from some decades in the north to five centuries in the south. After defeating the Visigoths in only a few months, the Umayyad Caliphate started expanding rapidly in the peninsula. Beginning in 711, the land that is now Portugal became part of the vast Umayyad Caliphate's empire of Damascus, which stretched from the Indus River in the Indian subcontinent up to the south of France, until its collapse in 750. That year the west of the empire gained its independence under Abd ar rahman I with the establishment of the Emirate of Córdoba. After almost two centuries, the emirate became the Caliphate of Córdoba in 929, until its dissolution a century later in 1031 into no less than 23 small kingdoms, called Taifa kingdoms. The governors of the Taifas each proclaimed themselves emir of their provinces and established diplomatic relations with the Christian kingdoms of the north. Most of Portugal fell into the hands of the Taifa of Badajoz of the Aftasid dynasty, and after a short spell of an ephemeral Taifa of Lisbon in 1022, fell under the dominion of the Taifa of Seville of the Abadids poets. The Taifa period ended with the conquest of the Almoravids who came from Morocco in 1086 winning a decisive victory at the Battle of Sagrajas, followed a century later in 1147, after the second period of Taifa, by the Almohads, also from Marrakesh. Al-Andalus was divided into different districts called Kura. Garb al-Andalus at its largest was constituted of ten Kuras, each with a distinct capital and governor. The main cities of the period in Portugal were Beja, Silves, Alcacer do Sal, Santarém and Lisbon. The Muslim population of the region consisted mainly of native Iberian converts to Islam the so-called Mawalid or Maladi and Berbers. The Arabs were principally noblemen from Syria and Oman, and though few in numbers, they constituted the elite of the population. The Berbers were originally from the Atlas Mountains and Rif Mountains of North Africa and were nomads.
Topic: <laughs> County of Portugale. An Asturian Visigothic noble named Pelagius of Asturias in 718 was elected leader by many of the ousted Visigoth nobles. Pelagius called for the remnant of the Christian Visigothic armies to rebel against the Moors and regroup in the unconquered northern Asturian highlands, better known today as the Cantabrian Mountains, in what is today the small mountain region in northwestern Spain, adjacent to the Bay of Biscay. Pelagius' plan was to use the Cantabrian Mountains as a place of refuge and protection from the invading Moors. He then aimed to regroup the Iberian Peninsula's Christian armies and use the Cantabrian Mountains as a springboard from which to regain their lands. In the process, after defeating the Moors in the Battle of Covadonga in 722, Pelagius was proclaimed king, thus founding the Christian Kingdom of Asturias and starting the War of Christian Reconquest known in Portuguese as the Reconquista Crista. At the end of the 9th century, the region of Portugal, between the rivers Minho and Douro, was freed or reconquered from the Moors by Vimara Pérez on the orders of King Alfonso III of Asturias. Finding that the region had previously had two major cities, Portus Cale in the coast and Braga in the interior, with many towns that were now deserted, he decided to repopulate and rebuild them with Portuguese and Galician refugees and other Christians. Apart from the Arabs from the south, the coastal regions in the north were also attacked by Norman and Viking raiders mainly from 844. The last great invasion, through the Minho River, ended with the defeat of Olaf II Haraldson in 1014 against the Galician nobility who also stopped further advances into the county of Portugal. Vimara Pérez organized the region he had reconquered, and elevated it to the status of county, naming it the County of Portugal after the region's major port city, Portus Cale or modern Porto. One of the first cities Vimara Pérez founded at this time is Vimarães, known today as Guimarães, the birthplace of the Portuguese nation", or the ''Cradle City'' Cidade Burco in Portuguese, after annexing the county of Portugal into one of the several counties that made up the Kingdom of Asturias, King Alfonso III of Asturias knighted Vimara Pérez, in 868, as the first count of Portus Cale Portugal. The region became known as Portucale, Portugal, and simultaneously Portugalia, the county of Portugal. Later the Kingdom of Asturias was divided into a number of Christian kingdoms in northern Iberia due to dynastic divisions of inheritance among the king's offspring. With the forced abdication of Alfonso III, the Great, of Asturias by his sons in 910, the Kingdom of Asturias split into three separate kingdoms. The three kingdoms were eventually reunited in 924 under the crown of Leon. In 1093, Alfonso VI of Leon bestowed the county to Henry of Burgundy and married him to his daughter, Teresa of Leon, for his role in reconquering the land from Moors. Henry based his newly formed county in Bracara Augusta modern Braga, capital city of the ancient Roman province, and also previous capital of several kingdoms over the first millennia. Afonsine era. On 24 June 1128, the Battle of São Mamede occurred near Guimarães. Afonso Henriques, Count of Portugal, defeated his mother Countess Teresa and her lover Fernão Pérez de Trava, thereby establishing himself as sole leader. Afonso then turned his arms against the Moors in the south. Afonso's campaigns were successful and, on 25 July 1139, he obtained an overwhelming victory in the Battle of Arique, and straight after was unanimously proclaimed King of Portugal by his soldiers. This is traditionally taken as the occasion when the county of Portugal, as a fief of the Kingdom of Leon, was transformed into the independent Kingdom of Portugal. Afonso then established the first of the Portuguese Cortes at Lamego, where he was crowned by the Archbishop of Braga, though the validity of the Cortes of Lamego has been disputed and called a myth created during the Portuguese Restoration War. Afonso was recognized in 1143 by King Alfonso VII of Leon, and in 1179 by Pope Alexander III. During the Reconquista period, Christians reconquered the Iberian Peninsula from Moorish domination. Afonso Henriques and his successors, aided by military monastic orders, pushed southward to drive out the Moors. At this time, Portugal covered about half of its present area. In 1249, the Reconquista ended with the capture of the Algarve and complete expulsion of the last Moorish settlements on the southern coast, giving Portugal its present-day borders, with minor exceptions. 
In one of these situations of conflict with the Kingdom of Castile, Dinis I of Portugal signed with the King Fernando IV of Castile which was represented, when being a minor, by his mother the Queen Maria de Molina the Treaty of Alcañices 1297, which stipulated that Portugal abolished agreed treaties against the Kingdom of Castile for supporting the infant Juan de Castilla. This treaty established inter alia the border demarcation between the Kingdom of Portugal and the Kingdom of Leon, where the disputed town of Olivenza was included. The reigns of Dinis I, Dennis I Afonso IV, Alphonse IV, and Pedro I, Peter I for the most part saw peace with the Christian kingdoms of Iberia. In 1348 and 1349 Portugal, like the rest of Europe, was devastated by the Black Death. In 1373, Portugal made an alliance with England, which is the longest standing alliance in the world. Over time, this went far beyond geo-political and military cooperation protecting both nations' interests in Africa, the Americas and Asia against French, Spanish and Dutch rivals and maintained strong trade and cultural ties between the two old European allies. Particularly in the Oporto region, there is visible English influence to this day. Topic. Jonine era and age of discoveries In 1383, John I of Castile, husband of Beatrice of Portugal and son-in-law of Ferdinand I of Portugal, claimed the throne of Portugal. A faction of petty noblemen and commoners, led by John of Avis later King John I of Portugal and commanded by General Nuno Álvarez Pereira defeated the Castilians in the Battle of Algebarota. With this battle, the House of Avas became the ruling House of Portugal. Portugal spearheaded European exploration of the world and the Age of Discovery. Prince Henry the Navigator, son of King João I, became the main sponsor and patron of this endeavour. During this period, Portugal explored the Atlantic Ocean, discovering several Atlantic archipelagos like the Azores, Madeira, and Cape Verde, explored the African coast, colonized selected areas of Africa, discovered an eastern route to India via the Cape of Good Hope, discovered Brazil, explored the Indian Ocean, established trading routes throughout most of southern Asia, and sent the first direct European maritime trade and diplomatic missions to China and Japan. In 1415, Portugal acquired the first of its overseas colonies by conquering Ceuta, the first prosperous Islamic trade center in North Africa. There followed the first discoveries in the Atlantic, Madeira and the Azores, which led to the first colonization movements. Throughout the 15th century, Portuguese explorers sailed the coast of Africa, establishing trading posts for several common types of tradable commodities at the time, ranging from gold to slaves, as they looked for a route to India and its spices, which were coveted in Europe. The Treaty of Tordesillas, intended to resolve the dispute that had been created following the return of Christopher Columbus, was made by Pope Alexander VI, the mediator between Portugal and Spain. It was signed on 7 June 1494, and divided the newly discovered lands outside Europe between the two countries along a meridian 370 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands off the west coast of Africa. In 1498, Vasco da Gama reached India and brought economic prosperity to Portugal and its population of 1.7 million residents, helping to start the Portuguese Renaissance. In 1500, the Portuguese explorer Gaspar Corte Real reached what is now Canada and founded the town of Portugal Cove Street. Phillips, Newfoundland and Labrador, long before the French and English in the 17th century, and being just one of many Portuguese colonizations of the Americas. In 1500, Pedro Álvarez Cabral discovered Brazil and claimed it for Portugal. Ten years later, Afonso de Albuquerque conquered Goa in India, Muscat and Ormuz in the Persian Strait, and Malacca, now a state in Malaysia. Thus, the Portuguese Empire held dominion over commerce in the Indian Ocean and South Atlantic. Portuguese sailors set out to reach Eastern Asia by sailing eastward from Europe, landing in such places as Taiwan, Japan, the island of Timor, and in the Moluccas. Although for a long period it was believed the Dutch were the first Europeans to arrive in Australia, there is also some evidence that the Portuguese may have discovered Australia in 1521. The Treaty of Zaragoza, signed on the 22nd of April 1529 between Portugal and Spain, specified the anti-meridian to the line of demarcation specified in the Treaty of Tordesillas. All these factors made Portugal one of the world's major economic, military, and political powers from the 15th century until the late 16th century. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Iberian Union, Restoration and Early Brigantine Era. Portugal voluntarily entered a dynastic union between 1580 and 1640. This occurred because the last two kings of the House of Avas, King Sebastian, who died in the Battle of Alcacer Quibir in Morocco, and his great uncle and successor, King Cardinal Henry of Portugal, both died without heirs, resulting in the Portuguese succession crisis of 1580. Subsequently, Philip II of Spain claimed the throne and was accepted as Philip I of Portugal. Portugal did not lose its formal independence, briefly forming a union of kingdoms. At this time Spain was a geographic territory. The joining of the two crowns deprived Portugal of an independent foreign policy and led to its involvement in the Eighty Years' War between Spain and the Netherlands. War led to a deterioration of the relations with Portugal's oldest ally, England, and the loss of Hormuz, a strategic trading post located between Iran and Oman. From 1595 to 1663 the Dutch-Portuguese War primarily involved the Dutch companies invading many Portuguese colonies and commercial interests in Brazil, Africa, India and the Far East, resulting in the loss of the Portuguese Indian sea trade monopoly. In 1640, John IV spearheaded an uprising backed by disgruntled nobles and was proclaimed king. The Portuguese Restoration War ended the 60-year period of the Iberian Union under the House of Habsburg. This was the beginning of the House of Braganza, which reigned in Portugal until 1910. King John IV's eldest son came to reign as Afonso VI, however his physical and mental disabilities left him overpowered by Luís de Vasconcelos e Sousa, third count of Castelo Melhor. In a palace coup organized by the king's wife, Maria Francisca of Savoy, and his brother, Pedro, Duke of Beja, King Afonso VI was declared mentally incompetent and exiled first to the Azores and then to the royal palace of Sintra, outside Lisbon. After Afonso's death, Pedro came to the throne as King Pedro II. Pedro's reign saw the consolidation of national independence, imperial expansion, and investment in domestic production. Pedro II's son, John V, saw a reign characterized by the influx of gold into the coffers of the royal treasury, supplied largely by the royal fifth a tax on precious metals that was received from the Portuguese colonies of Brazil and Maranhão. Acting as an absolute monarch, John nearly depleted his country's tax revenues on ambitious architectural works, most notably Mafra Palace, and on commissions and additions for his sizable art and literary collections. Official estimates, and most estimates made so far, place the number of Portuguese migrants to colonial Brazil during the gold rush of the 18th century at 600,000. This represented one of the largest movements of European populations to their colonies in the Americas during colonial times. <laughs> Pombaline era and Enlightenment In 1738, Sebastião José de Carvalho e Melo, 1st Marquis of Pombal, began a diplomatic career as the Portuguese ambassador in London and later in Vienna. The Queen Consort of Portugal, Archduchess Maria Anne Josepha of Austria, was fond of Melo, and after his first wife died, she arranged the widowed de Melo's second marriage to the daughter of the Austrian Field Marshal Leopold Joseph, Count von Don. King John V of Portugal, however, was not pleased and recalled Melo to Portugal in 1749. John V died the following year and his son, Joseph I of Portugal, was crowned. In contrast to his father, Joseph I was fond of de Melo, and with the Queen Mother's approval, he appointed Melo as Minister of Foreign Affairs. As the king's confidence in de Melo increased, the king entrusted him with more control of the state. By 1755, Sebastião de Mello was made Prime Minister. Impressed by British economic success that he had witnessed from his time as an ambassador, he successfully implemented similar economic policies in Portugal. He abolished slavery in Portugal and in the Portuguese colonies in India, reorganized the army and the navy, restructured the University of Coimbra, and ended discrimination against different Christian sects in Portugal. But Sebastião de Mello's greatest reforms were economic and financial, with the creation of several companies and guilds to regulate every commercial activity. He demarcated the region for production of port to ensure the wine's quality, and this was the first attempt to control wine quality and production in Europe. He ruled with a strong hand by imposing strict law upon all classes of Portuguese society from the high nobility to the poorest working class, along with a widespread review of the country's tax system. 
These reforms gained him enemies in the upper classes, especially among the high nobility, who despised him as a social upstart. Disaster fell upon Portugal in the morning of 1 November 1755, when Lisbon was struck by a violent earthquake with an estimated moment magnitude of 8.5 to 9. The city was razed to the ground by the earthquake and the subsequent tsunami and ensuing fires. Sebastião de Mello survived by a stroke of luck and then immediately embarked on rebuilding the city, with his famous quote, What now? We bury the dead and take care of the living. Despite the calamity and huge death toll, Lisbon suffered no epidemics and within less than one year was already being rebuilt. The new city centre of Lisbon was designed to resist subsequent earthquakes. Architectural models were built for tests, and the effects of an earthquake were simulated by marching troops around the models. The buildings and big squares of the Pombaline city centre still remain as one of Lisbon's tourist attractions. Sebastião de Mello also made an important contribution to the study of seismology by designing an inquiry that was sent to every parish in the country. Following the earthquake, Joseph I gave his prime minister even more power, and Sebastião de Mello became a powerful, progressive dictator. As his power grew, his enemies increased in number, and bitter disputes with the high nobility became frequent. In 1758 Joseph I was wounded in an attempted assassination. The Tavra family and the Duke of Aveiro were implicated and executed after a quick trial. The Jesuits were expelled from the country and their assets confiscated by the crown. Sebastião de Mello prosecuted every person involved, even women and children. This was the final stroke that broke the power of the aristocracy. Joseph I made his loyal minister Count of Arras in 1759. In 1762, Spain invaded Portuguese territory as part of the Seven Years' War, but by 1763 the status quo between Spain and Portugal before the war had been restored. Following the Tavra affair, the new Count of Arras knew no opposition. Made Marquis of Pombal. In 1770, he effectively ruled Portugal until Joseph I's death in 1779. The new ruler, Queen Maria I of Portugal, disliked the Marquis because of the power he amassed, and never forgave him for the ruthlessness with which he dispatched the Tavra family, and upon her accession to the throne, she withdrew all his political offices. The Marquis of Pombal died on his estate at Pombal in 1782. However, historians also argue that Pombal's enlightenment while far-reaching, was primarily a mechanism for enhancing autocracy at the expense of individual liberty and especially an apparatus for crushing opposition, suppressing criticism, and furthering colonial economic exploitation as well as intensifying book censorship and consolidating personal control and profit. Napoleonic era In the autumn of 1807, Napoleon moved French troops through Spain to invade Portugal. From 1807 to 1811, British Portuguese forces would successfully fight against the French invasion of Portugal, while the royal family and the Portuguese nobility, including Maria I, relocated to the Portuguese territory of Brazil, at that time a colony of the Portuguese Empire, in South America. This episode is known as the transfer of the Portuguese court to Brazil. With the occupation by Napoleon, Portugal began a slow but inexorable decline that lasted until the 20th century. This decline was hastened by the independence in 1822 of the country's largest colonial possession, Brazil. In 1807, as Napoleon's army closed in on Lisbon, the Prince Regent João VI of Portugal transferred his court to Brazil and established Rio de Janeiro as the capital of the Portuguese Empire. In 1815, Brazil was declared a kingdom and the Kingdom of Portugal was united with it, forming a pluricontinental state, the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil and the Algarves. As a result of the change in its status and the arrival of the Portuguese royal family, Brazilian administrative, civic, economical, military, educational, and scientific apparatus were expanded and highly modernized. Portuguese and their allied British troops fought against the French invasion of Portugal and by 1815 the situation in Europe had cooled down sufficiently that João V would have been able to return safely to Lisbon. However, the King of Portugal remained in Brazil until the Liberal Revolution of 1820, which started in Porto, demanded his return to Lisbon in 1821. Thus he returned to Portugal but left his son Pedro in charge of Brazil. 
When the Portuguese government attempted the following year to return the Kingdom of Brazil to subordinate status, his son Pedro, with the overwhelming support of the Brazilian elites, declared Brazil's independence from Portugal. Cisplatina, today's sovereign state of Uruguay, in the south, was one of the last additions to the territory of Brazil under Portuguese rule. Brazilian independence was recognized in 1825, whereby Emperor Pedro I granted to his father the titular honor of Emperor of Brazil. John VI's death in 1826 caused serious questions in his succession. Though Pedro was his heir, and reigned briefly as Pedro IV, his status as a Brazilian monarch was seen as an impediment to holding the Portuguese throne by both nations. Pedro abdicated in favor of his daughter, Maria II. However, Pedro's brother, Infante Miguel, claimed the throne in protest. After a proposal for Miguel and Maria to marry failed, Miguel seized power as King Miguel I, in 1828. In order to defend his daughter's rights to the throne, Pedro launched the liberal wars to reinstall his daughter and establish a constitutional monarchy in Portugal. The war ended in 1834, with Miguel's defeat, the promulgation of a constitution, and the reinstatement of Queen Maria II. Constitutional monarchy Queen Maria II, Mary II and King Ferdinand II's son, King Pedro V, Peter v modernized the country during his short reign 1853 Under his reign, roads, telegraphs, and railways were constructed and improvements in public health advanced. His popularity increased when, during the cholera outbreak of 1853–1856, he visited hospitals handing out gifts and comforting the sick. Pedro's reign was short, as he died of cholera in 1861, after a series of deaths in the royal family, including his two brothers Infante Fernando and Infante Joao, Duke of Beja, and his wife, Stephanie of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen. Not having children, his brother, Luis I of Portugal Louis I, ascended the throne and continued his modernization. At the height of European colonialism in the 19th century, Portugal had already lost its territory in South America and all but a few bases in Asia. Luanda, Benguela, Bissau, Lourenco Marcus, Porto Amboim and the island of Mozambique were among the oldest Portuguese-founded port cities in its African territories. During this phase, Portuguese colonialism focused on expanding its outposts in Africa into nation-sized territories to compete with other European powers there. With the Conference of Berlin of 1884, Portuguese Africa territories had their borders formally established on request of Portugal in order to protect the centuries-long Portuguese interests in the continent from rivalries enticed by the scramble for Africa. Portuguese Africa's cities and towns like Nova Lisboa, Sá da Bandeira, Silva Porto, Melange, Tete, Vila Junqueiro, Vila Peri and Vila Cabral were founded or redeveloped inland during this period and beyond. New coastal towns like Beira, Mocamedes, Lobito, João Belo, Nicola and Porto Amélia were also founded. Even before the turn of the 20th century, railway tracks as the Benguela Railway in Angola, and the Beira Railway in Mozambique, started to be built to link coastal areas and selected inland regions. Other episodes during this period of the Portuguese presence in Africa include the 1890 British ultimatum. This forced the Portuguese military to retreat from the land between the Portuguese colonies of Mozambique and Angola most of present-day Zimbabwe and Zambia, which had been claimed by Portugal and included in its Pink Map, which clashed with British aspirations to create a Cape to Cairo Railway. The Portuguese territories in Africa were Cape Verde, São Tomé and Príncipe, Portuguese Guinea, Angola, and Mozambique. The tiny fortress of São João Baptista de Ayuda on the coast of Dahomey, was also under Portuguese rule. In addition, Portugal still ruled the Asian territories of Portuguese India, Portuguese Timor and Macau. On 1 February 1908, the King Dom Carlos I of Portugal and his heir apparent, Prince Royal Dom Luís Felipe, Duke of Braganza, were murdered in Lisbon. Under his rule, Portugal had twice been declared bankrupt, on 14 June 1892, and again on 10 May 1902 causing social turmoil, economic disturbances, protests, revolts and criticism of the monarchy. Manuel II of Portugal became the new king, but was eventually overthrown by the 5 October 1910 revolution, which abolished the regime and instated republicanism in Portugal.
<laughs> First Republic and Estado Novo Political instability and economic weaknesses were fertile ground for chaos and unrest during the Portuguese First Republic. These conditions would lead to the failed monarchy of the North, the 28th of May 1926 coup d'état, and the creation of the national dictatorship, Ditadura Nacional. This in turn led to the establishment of the right-wing dictatorship of the Estado Novo under Antonio de Oliveira Salazar in 1933. Portugal was one of only five European countries to remain neutral in World War II. From the 1940s to the 1960s, Portugal was a founding member of NATO, OECD and the European Free Trade Association Gradually, new economic development projects and relocation of mainland Portuguese citizens into the overseas provinces in Africa were initiated, with Angola and Mozambique, as the largest and richest overseas territories, being the main targets of those initiatives. These actions were used to affirm Portugal's status as a transcontinental nation and not as a colonial empire. After India attained independence in 1947, pro-Indian residents of Dadra and Nagar Haveli, with the support of the Indian government and the help of pro-independence organizations, separated the territories of Dadra and Nagar Haveli from Portuguese rule in 1954. In 1961, São João Baptista de Ayuda's annexation by the Republic of Dahomey was the start of a process that led to the final dissolution of the centuries-old Portuguese Empire. According to the census of 1921 São João Baptista de Ayuda had five inhabitants and, at the moment of the ultimatum by the Dahomey government, it had only two inhabitants representing Portuguese sovereignty. Another forcible retreat from overseas territories occurred in December 1961 when Portugal refused to relinquish the territories of Goa, Daman and Diu. As a result, the Portuguese army and navy were involved in armed conflict in its colony of Portuguese India against the Indian armed forces. The operations resulted in the defeat and surrender of the limited Portuguese defensive garrison, which was forced to surrender to a much larger military force. The outcome was the loss of the remaining Portuguese territories in the Indian subcontinent. The Portuguese regime refused to recognize Indian sovereignty over the annexed territories, which continued to be represented in Portugal's National Assembly until the military coup of 1974. Also in the early 1960s, independence movements in the Portuguese overseas provinces of Angola, Mozambique and Guinea in Africa, resulted in the Portuguese Colonial War 1961 Throughout the colonial war period Portugal had to deal with increasing dissent, arms embargoes and other punitive sanctions imposed by most of the international community. However, the authoritarian and conservative Estado Novo regime, first installed and governed by Antonio de Oliveira Salazar and from 1968 onwards led by Marcelo Caetano, tried to preserve a vast centuries-long intercontinental empire with a total area of 2,168,071 square kilometers. Topic. Carnation Revolution and European integration The Portuguese government and army resisted the decolonization of its overseas territories until April 1974, when a bloodless left-wing military coup in Lisbon, known as the Carnation Revolution, led the way for the independence of the overseas territories in Africa and Asia, as well as for the restoration of democracy after two years of a transitional period known as PREC Processo Revolucionario M. Curso. This period was characterized by social turmoil and power disputes between left and right-wing political forces. The retreat from the overseas territories and the acceptance of its independence terms by Portuguese head representatives for overseas negotiations, which would create independent states in 1975, prompted a mass exodus of Portuguese citizens from Portugal's African territories mostly from Portuguese Angola and Mozambique. Over one million Portuguese refugees fled the former Portuguese provinces as white settlers were usually not considered part of the new identities of the former Portuguese colonies in Africa and Asia. Mario Soares and Antonio de Almeida Santos were charged with organizing the independence of Portugal's overseas territories. By 1975, all the Portuguese African territories were independent and Portugal held its first democratic elections in 50 years. Portugal continued to be governed by a Junta de Salvação Nacional until the Portuguese legislative election of 1976. 
It was won by the Portuguese Socialist Party PS and Mário Soares, its leader, became Prime Minister of the first constitutional government on 23 July. Mário Soares would be Prime Minister from 1976 to 1978 and again from 1983 to 1985. In this capacity Soares tried to resume the economic growth and development record that had been achieved before the Carnation Revolution, during the last decade of the previous regime. He initiated the process of accession to the European Economic Community EEC by starting accession negotiations as early as 1977. Portugal bounced between socialism and adherence to the neoliberal model. Land reform and nationalizations were enforced. The Portuguese constitution, approved in 1976, was rewritten in order to accommodate socialist and communist principles. Until the constitutional revisions of 1982 and 1989, the constitution was a highly charged ideological document with numerous references to socialism, the rights of workers, and the desirability of a socialist economy. Portugal's economic situation after its transition to democracy, obliged the government to pursue International Monetary Fund IMF monitored stabilization programs in 1977-78 and 1983-85. In 1986, Portugal joined the European Economic Community EEC that later became the European Union EU. In the following years Portugal's economy progressed considerably as a result of EEC, EU structural and cohesion funds and Portuguese companies' easier access to foreign markets. Portugal's last overseas territory, Macau, was peacefully handed over to the People's Republic of China in 1999, under the 1987 Joint Declaration that set the terms for Macau's handover from Portugal to the PRC. In 2002, the independence of East Timor Asia was formally recognized by Portugal, after an incomplete decolonization process that was started in 1975 because of the Carnation Revolution, but interrupted by an Indonesian armed invasion and occupation. On 26 March 1995, Portugal started to implement Schengen Area rules, eliminating border controls with other Schengen members while simultaneously strengthening border controls with non-member states. In 1996 the country was a co-founder of the Community of Portuguese Language Countries CPLP, headquartered in Lisbon. Expo 98 took place in Portugal and in 1999 it was one of the founding countries of the Euro and the Eurozone. On 5 July 2004, José Manuel Barroso, then Prime Minister of Portugal, was nominated President of the European Commission, the most powerful office in the European Union. On 1 December 2009, the Treaty of Lisbon entered into force, after it had been signed by the European Union member states on 13 December 2007 in the Geronimo's Monastery, in Lisbon, enhancing the efficiency and democratic legitimacy of the Union and improving the coherence of its action. The Republic of Ireland was the only EU state to hold a democratic referendum on the Lisbon Treaty, it was initially rejected by voters in 2008. Economic disruption and an unsustainable growth in borrowing costs in the wake of the late 2000s financial crisis led the country to negotiate in 2011 with the IMF and the European Union, through the European Financial Stability Mechanism and the European Financial Stability Facility a loan to help the country stabilize its finances. Geography. <laughs> 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 The territory of Portugal includes an area in the Iberian Peninsula referred to as the continent by most Portuguese and two archipelagos in the Atlantic Ocean, the archipelagos of Madeira and the Azores. It lies between latitudes 32 degrees and 43 degrees north, and longitudes 32 degrees and 6 degrees west. Mainland Portugal is split by its main river, the Tagus, that flows from Spain and disgorges in Tagus Estuary, in Lisbon, before escaping into the Atlantic. The northern landscape is mountainous towards the interior with several plateaus indented by river valleys, whereas the south, including the Algarve and the Alentejo regions, is characterized by rolling plains. Portugal's highest peak is the similarly named Mount Pico on the island of Pico in the Azores. This ancient volcano, which measures 2,351 meters (7,713 feet), is an iconic symbol of the Azores. While the Serra da Estrela on the mainland, the summit being 1,991 meters (6,532 feet) above sea level, is an important seasonal attraction for skiers and winter sports enthusiasts. 
The archipelagos of Madeira and the Azores are scattered within the Atlantic Ocean, the Azores straddling the Mid-Atlantic Ridge on a tectonic triple junction, and Madeira along a range formed by in-plate hotspot geology. Geologically, these islands were formed by volcanic and seismic events. The last terrestrial volcanic eruption occurred in 1957–58 Capilinos, and minor earthquakes occur sporadically, usually of low intensity. Portugal's exclusive economic zone, a sea zone over which the Portuguese have special rights over the exploration and use of marine resources, has 1,727,408 square kilometres. This is the third largest exclusive economic zone of the European Union and the 11th largest in the world. Topic: <laughs> Climate Portugal is defined as a Mediterranean climate CSA in the south, interior, and Douro region, CSB in the north, central Portugal and coastal Alentejo, mixed oceanic climate along the northern half of the coastline and also semi-arid climate or steppe climate BSK in certain parts of Beja district far south according to the Köppen Geiger climate classification, and is one of the warmest European countries. The annual average temperature in mainland Portugal varies from 8 to 12 degrees Celsius 46. 4 to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit in the mountainous interior north to 16 to 18 degrees Celsius 60.8 to 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit in the south and on the Guadiana River basin. There are however, variations from the highlands to the lowlands. Rivas Martinez, presents several different bioclimatic zones for Portugal. The Algarve, separated from the Alentejo region by mountains reaching up to 900 metres 3, feet in Alto de Foya, has a climate similar to that of the southern coastal areas of Spain or southwest Australia. Annual average rainfall in the mainland varies from just over 3,200 mm in, in the northern mountains to less than 300 mm in, in the area of the Maswemi River, near Coa, along the Douro River. Mount Pico is recognized as receiving the largest annual rainfall over 6250 mm 246.1 in per year in Portugal according to Instituto Português do Mar e da Atmosfera English Portuguese Institute of the Sea and the Atmosphere In some areas such as the Guadiana Basin annual average temperatures can be as high as 28 degrees Celsius 82 degrees Fahrenheit and summer highest temperatures routinely are over 40 degrees Celsius 104 degrees Fahrenheit The record high of 47.1 degrees Celsius 116.8 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded in Amarelaia although this might not be the hottest spot in summer according to satellite readings snowfalls occur regularly in the winter in the interior north and center of the country in districts such as Garda Braganca Viseu and Vila Real particularly on the mountains in winter temperatures may drop below minus 10.0 degrees Celsius 14.0 degrees Fahrenheit in particular in Serra da Estrela, Serra do Gires, Serra do Marau and Serra de Montesinho. In these places snow can fall any time from October to May. In the south of the country snowfalls are rare but still occur in the highest elevations. While the official absolute minimum by IPMA is minus 16.0 degrees Celsius (3.2 degrees Fahrenheit) in Peñas da Sad and Miranda do Douro, lower temperatures have been recorded, such as minus 17.5 degrees Celsius (0.5 degrees Fahrenheit) by Braganca Polytechnic Institute in the outskirts of the city in 1983, and below minus 20.0 degrees Celsius (minus 4.0 degrees Fahrenheit) in Serra da Estrela. Portugal has around 2,500 to 3,200 hours of sunshine a year, an average of 4 to 6 h in winter and 10 to 12 h in the summer, with higher values in the southeast and lower in the northwest. The sea surface temperature on the west coast of mainland Portugal varies from 12 to 15 degrees Celsius (53.6 to 59.0 degrees Fahrenheit) in winter to 18 to 22 degrees Celsius (64.4 to 71.6 degrees Fahrenheit) in the summer, while on the south coast it ranges from 15 degrees Celsius (59.0 degrees Fahrenheit) in winter and rises in the summer to about 23 degrees Celsius (73.4 degrees Fahrenheit) occasionally reaching 26 degrees Celsius .8 degrees Fahrenheit. .Both the archipelagos of the Azores and Madeira have a subtropical climate, although variations between islands exist, making weather predictions very difficult owing to rough topography. 
The Madeira and Azorean archipelagos have a narrower temperature range, with annual average temperatures exceeding 20 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit along the coast according to the Portuguese Meteorological Institute. Some islands in Azores do have drier months in the summer. Consequently, the island of the Azores have been identified as having a Mediterranean climate both CSA and CSB types, while some islands such as Flores or Corvo are classified as maritime temperate CFB and humid subtropical CFA, respectively, according to Köppen Geiger classification. Porto Santo Island in Madeira has a semi-arid steppe climate BSH. The Savage Islands, which are part of the regional territory of Madeira and a nature reserve are unique in being classified as a desert climate BWH with an annual average rainfall of approximately 150 mm in. The sea surface temperature in the archipelagos varies from 17 to 18 degrees Celsius .6 to .4 degrees Fahrenheit in winter to 24 to 25 degrees Celsius .2 to .0 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer occasionally reaching 25 degrees Celsius .0 degrees Fahrenheit. Biodiversity. <inaudible> <inaudible> Despite the fact that humans have occupied the territory of Portugal for thousands of years, something still remains of the original vegetation. In Gires both mature deciduous and coniferous forests can be found, an extremely rare worldwide mature Mediterranean forest remain in some parts of the Arabida mountain and a subtropical Lorisilva forest, dating back to the tertiary period, covers its largest continuous area in the world in the Madeira main island. Due to the human population decrease and rural exodus, Pyrenean oak and other local native trees are colonizing many abandoned areas. Boar, Iberian red deer, roe deer, and the Iberian wild goat, are reported to have expanded greatly during recent decades. Boars were found recently roaming at night inside large urban areas, like in Setúbal. Protected areas of Portugal include one national park Portuguese, Parque Nacional, 12 natural parks Portuguese, Parque Natural, 9 natural reserves Portuguese, Reserva Natural, 5 natural monuments Portuguese, Monumento Natural, and 7 protected landscapes Portuguese, Paisagem Protegida, which include the Parque Nacional da Peneda Gires, the Parque Natural da Serra da Estrela and the Paul Darzila. These natural environments are shaped by diverse flora, and include widespread species of pine especially the Pinus pinister and Pinus pinea species, the English oak Quercus robur, the Pyrenean oak Quercus pyrenaica, the chestnut Castanea sativa, the cork oak Quercus suber, the home oak Quercus ilex or the Portuguese oak Quercus phagania. Due to their economic value, some species of the genus Eucalyptus were introduced and are now common, despite their environmental impact. Laurasilva is a unique type of subtropical rainforest, which nowadays, in Europe, is only restricted to the Iberian Peninsula, in the Azores, and in particular on the island of Madeira. There are large forests of endemic Laurasilva forests, the latter protected as a natural heritage preserve. There are several species of diverse mammalian fauna, including the fox, badger, Iberian lynx, Iberian wolf, wild goat Capra Pyrenaica, wild cat Felis silvestris, hare, weasel, polecat, chameleon, mongoose, civet, brown bear spotted near Rio Minho, close to Peneda Gires, and many others. Portugal is an important stopover for migratory birds, in places such as Cape St. Vincent or the Monchique Mountains, where thousands of birds cross from Europe to Africa during the autumn or in the spring return migration. Most of the avian species congregate along the Iberian Peninsula since it is the closest stopover between northern Europe and Africa. 600 bird species occur in Portugal either for nesting or during the course of migration, and annually there are new registries of nesting species. The archipelagos of the Azores and Madeira are transient stopover for American, European, and African birds, while continental Portugal mostly encounters European and African bird species. There are more than 100 freshwater fish species, varying from the giant European catfish in the Tagus International Natural Park to some small and endemic species that live only in small lakes along the western portion of country, for example. Some of these rare and specific species are highly endangered because of habitat loss, pollution and drought. Upwelling along the west coast of Portugal makes the sea extremely rich in nutrients and diverse species of marine fish. The Portuguese marine waters are one of the richest in the world. 
Marine fish species are more common, and include thousands of species, such as the sardine Sardina pilchardus, tuna and Atlantic mackerel. Bioluminescent species are also well represented including species in different color spectrum and forms, like the glowing plankton that are possible to observe in some beaches. There are many endemic insect species, most only found in certain parts of Portugal, while other species are more widespread like the stag beetle and the cicada. The Macronesian islands Azores and Madeira have many endemic species like birds, reptiles, bats, insects, snails and slugs that evolved independently from other regions of Portugal. In Madeira, for example, it is possible to observe more than 250 species of land gastropods. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Government and Administration. Portugal has been a semi-presidential representative democratic republic since the ratification of the Constitution of 1976, with Lisbon, the nation's largest city, as its capital. The Constitution grants the division or separation of powers among four bodies referred as «organs of sovereignty» the President of the Republic, the Government, the Assembly of the Republic and the Courts, the President, who is elected to a five-year term, has an executive role, the current President is Marcelo Rebelo de Souza. The Assembly of the Republic is a single-chamber parliament composed of 230 deputies elected for a four-year term. The government is headed by the Prime Minister currently Antonio Costa and includes ministers and secretaries of state. The courts are organized into several levels, among the judicial, administrative and fiscal branches. The Supreme Courts are institutions of last resort, appeal. A 13-member constitutional court oversees the constitutionality of the laws. Portugal operates a multi-party system of competitive legislatures, local administrative governments at the national, regional and local levels. The Assembly of the Republic, regional assemblies and local municipalities and parishes, are dominated by two political parties, the Socialist Party and the Social Democratic Party, in addition to the Unitary Democratic Coalition Portuguese Communist Party and Ecologist Party, the Greens. The Left Bloc and the Democratic and Social Center, People's Party, which garner between 5 and 15 percent of the vote regularly. <inaudible> Presidency of the Republic The head of state of Portugal is the President of the Republic, elected to a five-year term by direct, universal suffrage. He or she has also supervision and reserve powers. Presidential powers include the appointment of the Prime Minister and the other members of the government where the President takes into account the results of legislative elections, dismissing the Prime Minister, dissolving the Assembly of the Republic to call early elections, vetoing legislation which may be overridden by the Assembly, and declaring a state of war or siege. The President is also the ex officio commander-in-chief of the armed forces. The President is advised on issues of importance by the Council of State, which is composed of six senior civilian officers, any former presidents elected under the 1976 Constitution, five members chosen by the Assembly, and five selected by the President. Government The government is headed by the presidentially appointed Prime Minister, also including one or more Deputy Prime Ministers, Ministers, Secretaries of State and Under-Secretaries of State. The government is both the organ of sovereignty that conducts the general politics of the country and the superior body of the public administration. It has essentially executive powers, but has also limited legislative powers. The government can legislate about its own organization, about areas covered by legislative authorizations conceded by the Assembly of the Republic and about the specific regulation of generalist laws issued by the Assembly. The Council of Ministers, under the presidency of the Prime Minister or the President of Portugal at the latter's request and the ministers may also include one or more deputy prime ministers acts as the cabinet. Each government is required to define the broad outline of its policies in a program, and present it to the Assembly for a mandatory period of debate. The failure of the Assembly to reject the government program by an absolute majority of deputies confirms the cabinet in office. <laughs> Parliament The Assembly of the Republic, in Lisbon is the National Parliament of Portugal. 
It is the main legislative body, although the government also has limited legislative powers. The Assembly of the Republic is a unicameral body composed of up to 230 deputies. Elected by universal suffrage according to a system of closed party list proportional representation, deputies serve four-year terms of office, unless the president dissolves the assembly and calls for new elections. Currently the government PS and the parties supporting it through a confidence and supply agreement B, PCP, PEV control parliament with the most seats. The PSD and CD's PP parties form the opposition to the government alongside a single seat held by PAN. Topic: Law and Drug Policy. The Portuguese legal system is part of the civil law legal system, also called the Continental Family Legal System. The main laws include the Constitution, 1976, as amended; the Portuguese Civil Code, 1966, as amended; and the Penal Code of Portugal, 1982, as amended. Other relevant laws are the Commercial Code 1888, as amended and the Civil Procedure Code 1961, as amended. The Supreme National Courts are the Supreme Court of Justice and the Constitutional Court. The Public Ministry, headed by the Attorney General of the Republic, constitutes the independent body of public prosecutors. Portuguese law applied in the former colonies and territories and continues to be the major influence for those countries. Portugal was the first country in the world to abolish life imprisonment in 1884 and was one of the first countries to abolish the death penalty. Maximum jail sentences are limited to 25 years. Portugal is also known for having decriminalized the usage of all common drugs in 2001, the first country in the world to do so. Portugal decriminalized possession of effectively all drugs that are still illegal in other developed nations including cannabis, cocaine, heroin, and LSD. While possession is legal, trafficking and possession of more than 10 days worth of personal use are still punishable by jail time and fines. People caught with small amounts of any drug are given the choice to go to a rehab facility, and may refuse treatment without consequences. Despite criticism from other European nations, who stated Portugal's drug consumption would tremendously increase, overall drug use has declined along with the number of HIV infection cases, which had dropped 50% by 2009. Drug use among 16- to 18-year-olds also declined, however the use of marijuana rose only slightly among that age group. <laughs> LGBT plus rights in Portugal. LGBT plus rights have increased substantially in the past years. On 31 May 2010, Portugal became the sixth country in Europe and the eighth country in the world to legally recognize same-sex marriage on the national level. The law came into force on 5 June 2010. Same-sex adoption is allowed since 1 March 2016 as is female same-sex couple access to medically assisted reproduction since 13 May 2016. This bill was adopted by the Parliament and signed by President Marcelo Rebelo de Souza. As of January 2017 the new law of gender identity, simplified the process of gender and name change for transgender people, making it easier for minors to change their gender identity. <laughs> <laughs> law enforcement Portugal's main police organizations are the Garda Nacional Republicana, GNR National Republican Guard, a Gendarmerie, the Polícia de Segurança Pública, PSP Public Security Police, a civilian police force who work in urban areas, and the Polícia Judiciaria, PJ Judicial Police, a highly specialized criminal investigation police that is overseen by the public ministry. Administrative divisions Administratively, Portugal is divided into 308 municipalities Portuguese, municipios or concelos, which after a reform in 2013 are subdivided into 3,092 civil parishes Portuguese, Fregasia. Operationally, the municipality and civil parish, along with the national government, are the only legally identifiable local administrative units identified by the government of Portugal for example, cities, towns or villages have no standing in law, although may be used as catchment for the defining services. 
For statistical purposes the Portuguese government also identifies nuts, intermunicipal communities and informally, the district system, used until European integration and being phased out by the national government. Continental Portugal is agglomerated into 18 districts, while the archipelagos of the Azores and Madeira are governed as autonomous regions. The largest units, established since 1976, are either mainland Portugal, Portuguese, Portugal Continental, and the autonomous regions of Portugal, Azores and Madeira. The 18 districts of mainland Portugal are Aveiro, Beja, Braga, Braganca, Castelo Branco, Coimbra, Évora, Faro, Garda, Liria, Lisbon, Porto Alegre, Porto, Santarém, Setúbal, Viana do Castelo, Vila Real, and Viseu. Each district takes the name of the district capital. Within the European Union NUTS nomenclature of territorial units for statistics system, Portugal is divided into seven regions, the Azores, Alentejo, Algarve, Centro, Lisboa, Madeira and Norte, and with the exception of the Azores and Madeira, these NUTS areas are subdivided into 28 subregions. <laughs> Foreign relations A member state of the United Nations since 1955, Portugal is also a founding member of NATO 1949, OECD 1961 and EFTA 1960. It left the last in 1986 to join the European Economic Community, which became the European Union in 1993. In 1996 it co-founded the Community of Portuguese Language Countries CPLP, which seeks to foster closer economic and cultural ties between the world's Lusophone nations. Antonio Guterres, who has served as Prime Minister of Portugal from 1995 to 2002 and UN High Commissioner for Refugees from 2005 to 2015, assumed the post of UN Secretary General on 1 January 2017, making him the first Secretary General from Western Europe since Kurt Waldheim of Austria 1972 to 1981, the first former head of government to become Secretary General and the first Secretary General born after the establishment of the United Nations on 26 June 1945. In addition, Portugal is a full member of the Latin Union 1983 and the Organization of Ibero-American States 1949. It has a friendship alliance and dual citizenship treaty with its former colony, Brazil. Portugal and England subsequently, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland share the world's oldest active military accord through their Anglo-Portuguese alliance Treaty of Windsor, which was signed in 1373. There are two international territorial disputes, both with Spain. Olivenza. Under Portuguese sovereignty since 1297, the municipality of Olivenza was ceded to Spain under the Treaty of Badajoz in 1801, after the War of the Oranges. Portugal claimed it back in 1815 under the Treaty of Vienna. However, since the 19th century, it has been continuously ruled by Spain which considers the territory theirs not only de facto but also de jure. The Ilhas Selvagens Savage Islands. The archipelago is under Portuguese domination but is geographically closer to the Canary Islands 165 km than to Madeira 280 km. Found in 1364 by Italian navigators, the islands belonged to private owners until 1971, when the Portuguese government bought them and established a natural reserve area covering the whole archipelago. The islands have been claimed by Spain since 1911 and the dispute has caused some periods of political tension between the two countries. The main problem is not so much their intrinsic value but the fact that they expand considerably to the south the exclusive economic zone of Portugal. Topic. Military The armed forces have three branches, Navy, Army and Air Force. They serve primarily as a self-defense force whose mission is to protect the territorial integrity of the country and provide humanitarian assistance and security at home and abroad. As of 2008, the three branches numbered 39,200 active personnel including 7,500 women. Portuguese military expenditure in 2009 was billion, representing 2.1% of GDP. Military conscription was abolished in 2004. The minimum age for voluntary recruitment is 18 years. The Army personnel comprises three brigades and other small units. 
an infantry brigade mainly equipped with Pander 2 APC, a mechanized brigade mainly equipped with Leopard 2 A6 tanks and M113 APC, and a rapid reaction brigade consisting of paratroopers, commandos and rangers. The Navy 10,700 personnel, of which 1,580 are Marines, the world's oldest surviving naval force, has five frigates, seven corvettes, two submarines, and 28 patrol and auxiliary vessels. The Air Force 7,500 personnel has the Lockheed F-16 Fighting Falcon and the Dassault, Dornier Alpha Jet as the main combat aircraft. In addition to the three branches of the armed forces, there is the National Republican Guard, a security force subject to military law and organization gendarmery comprising 25,000 personnel. This force is under the authority of both the Defense and the Interior Ministry. It has provided detachments for participation in international operations in Iraq and East Timor. The United States maintains a military presence with 770 troops in the Lajes Air Base at Tercera Island, in the Azores. The Allied Joint Force Command Lisbon, JFC Lisbon one of the three main subdivisions of NATO's Allied Command operations, it is based in Eras, near Lisbon. In the 20th century, Portugal engaged in two major conflicts, World War I and the Portuguese Colonial War 1961 After the end of the Portuguese Empire in 1975, the Portuguese armed forces have participated in peacekeeping missions in East Timor, Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Somalia, Iraq, Nasiriya, Lebanon, Mali and Central African Republic. Portugal also conducted several independent unilateral military operations abroad, as were the cases of the interventions of the Portuguese armed forces in Angola in 1992 and in Guinea-Bissau in 1998 with the main objectives of protecting and withdrawing of Portuguese and foreign citizens threatened by local civil conflicts. Government finance The Portuguese government is heavily indebted, and received a €78 billion Euro bailout from the European Union and the International Monetary Fund in May 2011. The ratio of Portugal's debt to its overall economy, was 107% when it received the bailout. As part of the deal, the country agreed to cut its budget deficit from 9.8% of GDP in 2010 to 5.9% in 2011, 4.5% in 2012 and 3% in 2013. After the bailout was announced, the Portuguese government headed by Pedro Passos Coelho managed to implement measures with the intention of improving the state's financial situation, including tax hikes, a freeze of civil service related lower wages and cuts of higher wages by 14.3% on top of the government's spending cuts. The Portuguese government also agreed to eliminate its golden share in Portugal Telecom which gave it veto power over vital decisions. In 2012, all public servants had already seen an average wage cut of 20% relative to their 2010 baseline, with cuts reaching 25% for those earning more than €1,500 per month. The IMF, the European Commission (EC), and the European Central Bank (ECB) said in September 2012 that Portugal's debt would peak at 124% of gross domestic product in 2014. The IMF previously said in July 2012 that Portugal's debt would peak at about 118.5% of GDP in 2013. In September 2013, the Portuguese government reviewed again the public debt of Portugal for 2013 to 127.8%. After a peak of 130.9% in that month, a report released in January 2011 by the Diário de Notícias and published in Portugal by Gradova had demonstrated that in the period between the Carnation Revolution in 1974 and 2010, the Democratic Portuguese Republic governments encouraged over expenditure and investment bubbles through unclear public-private partnerships and funding of numerous ineffective and unnecessary external consultancy and advisory of committees and firms. This allowed considerable slippage in state-managed public works and inflated top management and head officer bonuses and wages. Persistent and lasting recruitment policies boosted the number of redundant public servants. 
Risky credit, public debt creation, and European structural and cohesion funds were mismanaged across almost four decades. After the financial crisis of 2007 08, it was known in 2008 2009 that two Portuguese banks Banco Português de Negocios BPN and Banco Privado Português BPP had been accumulating losses for years due to bad investments, embezzlement, and accounting fraud. The case of BPN was particularly serious because of its size, market share, and the political implications. Portugal's then president, Cavaco Silva, and some of his political allies maintained personal and business relationships with the bank and its CEO, who was eventually charged and arrested for fraud and other crimes. In the grounds of avoiding a potentially serious financial crisis in the Portuguese economy, the Portuguese government decided to give them a bailout, eventually at a future loss to taxpayers and to the Portuguese people in general. Economy Portugal is a developed and a high-income country, with a GDP per capita of 77% of the EU28 average in 2017 increasing from 75% in 2012 and a HDI of 0.843 the 41st highest in 2016. By the end of 2016, Portugal's GDP PPP was $30,612 per capita, according to OECD's report. The national currency of Portugal is the euro, euro which replaced the Portuguese escudo, and the country was one of the original member states of the eurozone. Portugal's central bank is the Banco de Portugal, an integral part of the European system of central banks. Most industries, businesses and financial institutions are concentrated in the Lisbon and Porto metropolitan areas. The Setúbal, Aveiro, Braga, Coimbra and Liria districts are the biggest economic centres outside these two main areas. According to World Travel Awards, Portugal was Europe's leading golf destination in 2012 and 2013, since the Carnation Revolution of 1974, which culminated in the end of one of Portugal's most notable phases of economic expansion that started in the 1960s. A significant change has occurred in the nation's annual economic growth. After the turmoil of the 1974 revolution and the PREC period, Portugal tried to adapt to a changing modern global economy, a process that continues in 2013. Since the 1990s, Portugal's public consumption-based economic development model has been slowly changing to a system that is focused on exports, private investment and the development of the high-tech sector. Consequently, business services have overtaken more traditional industries such as textiles, clothing, footwear and cork Portugal is the world's leading cork producer, wood products and beverages. In the second decade of the 21st century, the Portuguese economy suffered its most severe recession since the 1970s, resulting in the country having to be bailed out by the European Commission, European Central Bank and International Monetary Fund IMF. The bailout, agreed to in 2011, required Portugal to enter into a range of austerity measures in exchange for funding support of €78 billion. Euros. In May 2014, the country exited the bailout but reaffirmed its commitment to maintaining its reformist momentum. At the time of exiting the bailout, the economy had contracted by 0.7% in the first quarter of 2014. However, unemployment, while still high, had fallen to 15.3%. The average salary in Portugal is €910 Euros per month, excluding self employed individuals, and the minimum wage, which is regulated by law, is €580 Euros per month, paid 14 times per annum. The Global Competitiveness Report for 2014-2015, published by the World Economic Forum, placed Portugal on the 36th position on the Economic Index. The Economist Intelligence Unit's Quality of Life Index placed Portugal as the country with the 19th best quality of life in the world for 2005, ahead of other economically and technologically advanced countries like France, Germany, the United Kingdom and South Korea, but nine places behind its sole neighbour, Spain. This is despite the fact that Portugal remains as one of the countries with the lowest per capita GDP in Western Europe. Major state-owned companies include, Aguas de Portugal Water, Caixa Geral de Depositos Banking, Comboios de Portugal Railways, Companhia das Lazerias Agriculture and RTP Media. Some former state-owned entities are managed by state-run holding company Parpublica, which is a shareholder of several public and private companies. 
Among former state-owned companies recently privatized are CTT, Postal Service, TAP Portugal Airline, and ANA Airports. Companies listed on Euronext Lisbon Stock Exchange like EDP, Galp, Geronimo Martins, Moda Engel, Novabase, Semifa, Portusol Saporsal, Portugal Telecom and Sonai, are amongst the largest corporations of Portugal by number of employees, net income or international market share. The Euronext Lisbon is the major stock exchange of Portugal and is part of the NYSE Euronext, the first global stock exchange. The SI20 is Portugal's most selective and widely known stock index. The International Monetary Fund issued an update report on the economy of Portugal in late June 2017 with a strong near-term outlook and an increase in investments and exports over previous years. Because of a surplus in 2016, the country was no longer bound by the excessive deficit procedure which had been implemented during an earlier financial crisis. The banking system was more stable, although there were still non-performing loans and corporate debt. The IMF recommended working on solving these problems for Portugal to be able to attract more private investment. Sustained strong growth, together with continued public debt reduction, would reduce vulnerabilities arising from high indebtedness, particularly when monetary accommodation is reduced. Topic: <laughs> Primary sector. Agriculture in Portugal is based on small to medium-sized family-owned dispersed units. However, the sector also includes larger-scale intensive farming export-oriented agro-businesses backed by companies like Grupo RAR's Vitacres, Sovina, Lactogal, Vale da Rosa, Companhia das Lazerias and Valoro. The country produces a wide variety of crops and livestock products, including, tomatoes, citrus, green vegetables, rice, corn, wheat, barley, olives, oilseeds, nuts, cherries, bilberry, table grapes, edible mushrooms, dairy products, poultry and beef. Forestry has also played an important economic role among the rural communities and industry namely paper industry that includes Portusol Saporsal Group, engineered wood that includes Sonai Industria, and furniture that includes several manufacturing plants in and around Pacos de Ferreira, the core of Portugal's major industrial operations of IKEA. In 2001, the gross agricultural product accounted for 4% of the national GDP. Traditionally a sea power, Portugal has had a strong tradition in the Portuguese fishing sector and is one of the countries with the highest fish consumption per capita. The main landing sites in Portugal including Azores and Madeira, according to total landings in weight by year, are the harbours of Matosinos, Peniche, Olheo, Sacimbra, Figueira da Foz, Sines, Portimao and Madeira. Portuguese processed fish products are exported through several companies, under a number of different brands and registered trademarks, such as Ramirez, the world's oldest active canned fish producer. Portugal is a significant European minerals producer and is ranked among Europe's leading copper producers. The nation is also a notable producer of tin, tungsten and uranium. However, the country lacks the potential to conduct hydrocarbon exploration and aluminium, a limitation that has hindered the development of Portugal's mining and metallurgy sectors. Although the country has vast iron and coal reserves, mainly in the north, after the 1974 revolution and the consequent economic globalization, low competitiveness forced a decrease in the extraction activity for these minerals. The Panascara and Nevis Corvo mines are among the most recognized Portuguese mines that are still in operation. Portugal is rich in its lithium subsoil, which is especially concentrated in the districts of Garda, Viseu, Vila Real, and Viana do Castelo, while most of the country's lithium comes from the Goncalo Applite Pegmatite field. The largest lithium mine in Europe is operated by Grupo Moda, Felmica, in the Garda region, which is estimated to have reserves for 30 years of production. It has five more deposits in its possession. Savannah Resources on May 2018 announced a 52% increase in the estimated lithium resources at the Mina do Barroso lithium project in northern Portugal, saying the country could become the first European supplier of spodamine, a lithium-bearing mineral. The company said the estimated mineral resources at the mine now stood at 14 million tons. Lithium prices have risen in expectation of growing demand for the mineral, which is used in batteries for electric vehicles and for storing electricity from the power grid. 
Europe consumes more than 20% of the global supply of battery grade lithium but currently has to import all its supplies of the mineral. W Resources stated in 2018 that it had started a new drilling campaign at its São Martinho gold project in Portugal. The so called reverse circulation drilling program included 15 holes with around 2,000 metres of total drilling. The objective is to extend resources by integrating the data from 2016 drilling results with the expansion expected with the ongoing campaign. Wine has been one of the most noted Portuguese exports. The country is the seventh largest exporter of the product worldwide, by value. <inaudible> <inaudible> Secondary sector Industry is diversified, ranging from automotive Volkswagen Auto Europa and Peugeot Citroën, aerospace Embraer and OGMA, electronics and textiles, to food, chemicals, cement and wood pulp. Volkswagen Group's Auto Europa Motor Vehicle Assembly Plant in Palmela is among the largest foreign direct investment projects in Portugal. Modern non-traditional technology-based industries, such as aerospace, biotechnology and information technology, have been developed in several locations across the country. Alverca, Covila, Évora, and Ponte de Sor are the main centers of the Portuguese aerospace industry, which is led by Brazil-based company Embraer and the Portuguese company OGMA. Following the turn of the 21st century, many major biotechnology and information technology industries have been founded, and are concentrated in the metropolitan areas of Lisbon, Porto, Braga, Coimbra and Aveiro. <laughs> <laughs> Tertiary sector The banking and insurance sectors performed well until the late 2000s financial crisis, and this partly reflected a rapid deepening of the market in Portugal. While sensitive to various types of market and underwriting risks, it has been estimated that overall both the life and non-life sectors will be able to withstand a number of severe shocks, even though the impact on individual insurers varies widely, travel and tourism continue to be extremely important for Portugal. It has been necessary for the country to focus upon its niche attractions, such as health, nature, and rural tourism, to stay ahead of its competitors. Portugal is among the top 20 most visited countries in the world, receiving an average of 20 million foreign tourists each year. In 2014, Portugal was elected the best European country by the USA Today. In 2017, Portugal was elected both Europe's leading destination and world's leading destination tourist hotspots in Portugal are Lisbon, Cascais, Fatima, Algarve, Madeira, Porto, and the city of Coimbra. Lisbon attracts the 16th most tourists among European cities with 7 million tourists occupying the city's hotels in 2006. Also, between 5 to 6 million religious pilgrims visit Fatima each year, where apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary to three shepherd children reportedly took place in 1917. The sanctuary of Our Lady of Fatima is one of the largest Roman Catholic shrines in the world. The Portuguese government continues to promote and develop new tourist destinations, such as the Douro Valley, the island of Porto Santo, and Alentejo. The legend of the rooster of Barcelos tells the story of a dead rooster's miraculous intervention in proving the innocence of a man who had been falsely accused and sentenced to death. The story is associated with the 17th century Calvary that is part of the collection of the archaeological museum located in Paco dos Condes, a Gothic style palace in Barcelos, a city in northwest Portugal. The rooster of Barcelos is bought by many tourists as a souvenir. On 30 November 2016, the United Nations added the Portuguese Basalhes tradition of making black pottery to the UNESCO Heritage Protection List. On 7 December 2017, the United Nations added the Bonicos de Estremoz, Toys of Estremoz tradition as an UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humankind. Topic quaternary sector Scientific and technological research activities in Portugal are mainly conducted within a network of R&D units belonging to public universities and state-managed autonomous research institutions like the INETI, Instituto Nacional de Engenharia, Tecnologia e Inovação and the INRB, Instituto Nacional dos Recursos Biológicos. The funding and management of this research system is mainly conducted under the authority of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Higher Education MCTES itself and the MCTES's Fundicao para a Ciencia e Tecnologia 
The largest R&D units of the public universities by volume of research grants and peer-reviewed publications, include biosciences research institutions like the Instituto de Medicina Molecular, the Center for Neuroscience and Cell Biology, the IPATIMUP, the Instituto de Biología Molecular e Cellular and the Abel Salazar Biomedical Sciences Institute. Among the largest non-state-run research institutions in Portugal are the Instituto Gulbenkian de Ciencia and the Champalimo Foundation, a neuroscience and oncology research center, which in addition awards every year one of the highest monetary prizes of any science prize in the world. A number of both national and multinational high-tech and industrial companies, are also responsible for research and development projects. One of the oldest learned societies of Portugal is the Sciences Academy of Lisbon, founded in 1779. Iberian bilateral state-supported research efforts include the International Iberian Nanotechnology Laboratory and the Ibersavis Distributed Computing Platform, which are joint research programs of both Portugal and Spain. Portugal is a member of several pan-European scientific organizations. These include the European Space Agency ESA, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics CERN, ITER, and the European Southern Observatory ESO. Portugal has the largest aquarium in Europe, the Lisbon Oceanarium, and the Portuguese have several other notable organizations focused on science-related exhibits and divulgation, like the state agency Ciencia Viva, a program of the Portuguese Ministry of Science and Technology to the promotion of a scientific and technological culture among the Portuguese population, the Science Museum of the University of Coimbra, the National Museum of Natural History at the University of Lisbon, and the Visionarium. With the emergence and growth of several science parks throughout the world that helped create many thousands of scientific, technological and knowledge-based businesses, Portugal started to develop several science parks across the country. These include the Tagus Park in Aras, the Coimbra I Park in Coimbra, the Biocant in Cantanhede, the Madeira Technopolo in Funchal, Sines Technopolo in Sines, Tecmaia in Maia and Parkerbus in Covila. Companies locate in the Portuguese science parks to take advantage of a variety of services ranging from financial and legal advice through to marketing and technological support. Igas Manas, a Portuguese physician who developed the cerebral angiography and leucotomy, received in 1949 the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. He is the first Portuguese recipient of a Nobel Prize and the only in the sciences. The European Innovation Scoreboard 2011, placed Portugal-based innovation in the 15th position, with an impressive increase in innovation expenditure and output. Transport By the early 1970s, Portugal's fast economic growth with increasing consumption and purchase of new automobiles set the priority for improvements in transportation. Again in the 1990s, after joining the European Economic Community, the country built many new motorways. Today, the country has a 68,732 kilometers, 42,708 miles road network, of which almost 3,000 kilometers, 1,864 miles are part of system of 44 motorways. Opened in 1944, the first motorway which linked Lisbon to the National Stadium was an innovative project that made Portugal among one of the first countries in the world to establish a motorway this roadway eventually became the lisbon Casque Highway, or A5. Although a few other tracts were created around 1960 and 1970, it was only after the beginning of the 1980s that large-scale motorway construction was implemented. In 1972, Brisa, the highway concessionaire, was founded to handle the management of many of the region's motorways. On many highways, a toll needs to be paid, see Via Verde. Vasco da Gama Bridge is the longest bridge in Europe, continental Portugal's 89,015 square kilometers, 34,369 square miles. Territory is serviced by four international airports located near the principal cities of Lisbon, Porto, Faro and Beja. Lisbon's geographical position makes it a stopover for many foreign airlines at several airports within the country. The primary flag carrier is TAP Air Portugal, although many other domestic airlines provide services within and without the country. The government decided to build a new airport outside Lisbon, in Alcaxé, to replace Lisbon Portela Airport, though this plan has been suspended due to austerity measures. 
Currently, the most important airports are in Lisbon, Porto, Faro, Funchal, Madeira, and Ponta Delgada, Azores, managed by the National Airport Authority Group ANA, Aeroportos de Portugal. One other important airport is the Aeroporto Internacional das Lajes on the island of Terceira in the Azores. This airport serves as one of two international airports serving countries outside the European Union for all nine islands of the Azores. It also serves as a military air base for the United States Air Force. The base remains in use to the present day. A national railway system that extends throughout the country and into Spain, is supported and administered by Comboios de Portugal. Rail transport of passengers and goods is derived using the 2,791 kilometers (1,734 miles) of railway lines currently in service, of which 1,430 kilometers (889 miles) are electrified, and about 900 kilometers (559 miles) allow train speeds greater than 120 kilometers per hour (75 miles per hour). The railway network is managed by the refer while the transport of passengers and goods are the responsibility of Comboios de Portugal CP, both public companies. In 2006, the CP carried 133 million passengers and 9,750,000 t 9,600,000 long tons, 10,700,000 short tons of goods. The major seaports are located in Sines, Lisbon, Lakesos, Setúbal, Aveiro, Figueira da Foz, and Faro. The two largest metropolitan areas have subway systems, Lisbon Metro and Metro Sul do Tejo in the Lisbon metropolitan area and Porto Metro in the Porto metropolitan area, each with more than 35 kilometres of lines. In Portugal, Lisbon tram services have been supplied by the Companhia de Caras de Ferro de Lisboa Caris, for over a century. In Porto, a tram network, of which only a tourist line on the shores of the Douro remains, began construction on 12 September 1895 a first for the Iberian Peninsula. All major cities and towns have their own local urban transport network, as well as taxi services. Topic. Energy Portugal has considerable resources of wind and river power, the two most cost-effective renewable energy sources. Since the turn of the 21st century, there has been a trend towards the development of a renewable resource industry and reduction of both consumption and use of fossil fuels. In 2006, the world's largest solar power plant at that date, the Mora Photovoltaic Power Station, began operating near Mora, in the south, while the world's first commercial wave power farm, the Agucadora Wave Farm, opened in the Norte region 2008. By the end of 2006, 66% of the country's electrical production was from coal and fuel power plants, while 29% were derived from hydroelectric dams, and 6% by wind energy. In 2008, renewable energy resources were producing 43% of the nation's consumption of electricity, even as hydroelectric production decreased with severe droughts. As of June 2010, electricity exports had outnumbered imports. In the period between January and May 2010, 70% of the national production of energy came from renewable sources. Portugal's national energy transmission company, Reeds Energéticas Nacionais uses sophisticated modeling to predict weather, especially wind patterns, and computer programs to calculate energy from the various renewable energy plants. Before the solar wind revolution, Portugal had generated electricity from hydropower plants on its rivers for decades. New programs combine wind and water, wind-driven turbines pump water uphill at night, the most blustery period, then the water flows downhill by day, generating electricity, when consumer demand is highest. Portugal's distribution system is also now a two-way street. Instead of just delivering electricity, it draws electricity from even the smallest generators, like rooftop solar panels. The government aggressively encouraged such contributions by setting a premium price for those who buy rooftop-generated solar electricity. Demographics The Statistics Portugal Portuguese, INE, Instituto Nacional de Estadística estimates that, according to the 2011 census, the population was 10,562,178 of which 52% was female, 48% was male. 
In 2017 and according to more up-to-date figures, the population decreased to 10,291,027. This population has been relatively homogeneous for most of its history. A single religion, Roman Catholicism, and a single language have contributed to this ethnic and national unity, namely after the expulsion of the Moors and Jews. A number of those minorities nevertheless, stayed in Portugal, under the condition that they convert to Catholicism, after which they became known as Moriscos and Moranos or more commonly Cristaos Novos new Christians. A small number of the former Jews may have continued to observe Rabbinic Judaism in secret over many generations, in the case of the secret Jews of Belmonte, a small town in the interior, where now people observe the Jewish faith openly. After 1772 the distinction between Old and New Christians was abolished by decree. Some famous Portuguese New Christians were the mathematician Pedro Nunes and the physician and naturalist Garcia de Orta. Another interesting demographic feature relates to the Scandinavian expansion towards the west and strong activity in northern Portugal where it is believed some coastline communities kept Scandinavian ancestry in Aveiro, Porto and Braga regions. The most important demographic influence in the modern Portuguese seems to be the oldest one. Current interpretation of Y chromosome and mtDNA data suggests that the Portuguese have their origin in Paleolithic peoples that began arriving to the European continent around 45,000 years ago. All subsequent migrations did leave an impact, genetically and culturally, but the main population source of the Portuguese is still Paleolithic. Genetic studies show Portuguese populations not to be significantly different from other European populations. Portuguese people have a preponderancy of Iberian genetics Iron Age period which belong to R1B haplogroup family alongside with Brythonic Alpine and Gaelic genetical markers. Also expectable but not so common are South European Sardinian, Italian and Balkans, broadly Northwestern West Germanic and in a less extent British, Irish Brythonic, Gaelic and French Alpine. With a low confidence range there are Scandinavian and East European genetical markers. Other sources would point out a small presence of Berber and Jewish that would be also part of a low confidence region. Native Portuguese are an Iberian ethnic group, whose ancestry is very similar to Spaniards and have strong ties with fellow Atlantic Arc countries like Ireland, British Isles, France and Belgium due to maritime trade dated as far back as the Bronze Age. These maritime contacts and the prevalence of R1B haplogroup as the main genetical marker of these countries suggest a common ancestry and cultural proximity. Other maritime contacts with the Mediterranean especially with Greeks and Phoenicians add particular cultural phenotypes in southern Portugal and southern Spain Tartesso's culture, making both Portugal and Spain a bridge between northwestern Europe and the Mediterranean but maintaining the Atlantic character. The total fertility rate TFR as of 2015 was estimated at 1.52 children born, woman, which is below the replacement rate of 2.1. In 2016, 52.8% of births were to unmarried women. Like most Western countries, Portugal has to deal with low fertility levels. The country has experienced a sub-replacement fertility rate since the 1980s. The structure of Portuguese society is characterized by an increasing inequality which at present 2015 places the country in the lowest third of the social justice index for the European Union. Portugal's parliament in 2018 approved a budget plan for 2019 that includes tax breaks for returning emigrants in a bid to lure back those who left during the global financial crisis that hit the country. The expansionary 2019 budget, backed by a left-wing majority in Parliament, also aims to boost the purchasing power of households while cutting the already low deficit even further. Returning emigrants will be allowed to declare only half their taxable income for five years if they return, provided they lived abroad for at least three years. The «return program» is to run for two years. Around 500,000 residents left Portugal between 2010 and 2015 in the wake of the global financial crisis. Although some 350,000 have since returned, Lisbon wants to tempt the rest to come home, in a similar scheme to the Irish one, as well as Portugal struggles with the low birth rate and an aging population. According to projections by the National Statistics Office, Portugal's population will fall to 7.7 .7 million by 2080 from 10.3 million now. Urbanization. Topic. Metropolitan Areas and Functional Urban Area FUA. 
There are two greater metropolitan areas GAMS, Lisbon and Porto. Immigration In 2007, Portugal had 10,617,575 inhabitants of whom about 332,137 were legal immigrants. As of 2015, Portugal had 10,341,330 inhabitants of whom about 383,759 were legal migrants, making up 3.7% of the population. Portugal's colonial history has long since been a cornerstone of its national identity, as has its geographic position at the southwestern corner of Europe, looking out into the Atlantic Ocean. It was one of the last Western colonial European powers to give up its overseas territories among them Angola and Mozambique in 1975, turning over the administration of Macau to the People's Republic of China at the end of 1999. Consequently, it has both influenced and been influenced by cultures from former colonies or dependencies, resulting in immigration from these former territories for both economic and personal reasons. Portugal, long a country of emigration the vast majority of Brazilians have Portuguese ancestry, has now become a country of net immigration, and not just from the last Indian Portuguese until 1961, African Portuguese until 1975, and Far East Asian Portuguese until 1999 overseas territories. An estimated 800,000 Portuguese returned to Portugal as the country's African possessions gained independence in 1975. Since the 1990s, along with a boom in construction, several new waves of Ukrainian, Brazilian, Lusophone Africans, and other Africans have settled in the country. Romanian, Moldovans, Kosovar, and Chinese have also migrated to the country. Portugal's Romani population is estimated to be at about 40,000. Numbers of Venezuelan, Pakistani and Indian migrants are also significant. In addition, a number of EU citizens, mostly from the United Kingdom, other Northern European or Nordic countries, have become permanent residents in the country with the British community being mostly composed of retired pensioners who live in the Algarve and Madeira. Religion According to the 2011 census, 81.0% of the Portuguese population is Roman Catholic. The country has small Protestant, Latter-day Saint, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, Eastern Orthodox Church, Jehovah's Witnesses, Baha'i, Buddhist, Jewish and Spiritist communities. Influences from African traditional religion and Chinese traditional religion are also felt among many people, particularly in fields related with traditional Chinese medicine and African witch doctors. Some 6.8% of the population declared themselves to be non religious, and 8.3% did not give any answer about their religion. Many Portuguese holidays, festivals, and traditions have a Christian origin or connotation. Although relations between the Portuguese state and the Roman Catholic Church were generally amiable and stable since the earliest years of the Portuguese nation, their relative power fluctuated. In the 13th and 14th centuries, the Church enjoyed both riches and power stemming from its role in the Reconquest, its close identification with early Portuguese nationalism and the foundation of the Portuguese educational system, including its first university. The growth of the Portuguese overseas empire made its missionaries important agents of colonization, with important roles in the education and evangelization of people from all the inhabited continents. The growth of liberal and nascent republican movements during the eras leading to the formation of the First Portuguese Republic 1910 changed the role and importance of organized religion. Portugal is a secular state, church and state were formally separated during the Portuguese First Republic, and later reiterated in the 1976 Portuguese Constitution. Other than the constitution, the two most important documents relating to religious freedom in Portugal are the 1940 Concordata later amended in 1971 between Portugal and the Holy See and the 2001 Religious Freedom Act. Languages <laughs> Portuguese is the official language of Portugal. Portuguese is a Romance language that originated in what is now Galicia and northern Portugal, originating from Galician Portuguese, which was the common language of the Galician and Portuguese people until the formation of Portugal. There are still many similarities between the Galician culture and the Portuguese culture. 
Galicia is a consultative observer of the community of Portuguese language countries. The Portuguese language is derived from the Latin spoken by the Romanized pre-Roman peoples of the Iberian Peninsula around 2000 years ago, particularly the Celts, Tartessians, Lusitanians and Iberians. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the language spread worldwide as Portugal established a colonial and commercial empire between 1415 and 1999. Portuguese is spoken as a native language in five different continents, with Brazil accounting for the largest number of native Portuguese speakers of any country 209, 5 million speakers in 2016. In 2013 the Portuguese language is the official language spoken in Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, Cape Verde, São Tomé and Príncipe, Guinea-Bissau, Equatorial Guinea, and East Timor. These countries plus Macau Special Administrative Region People's Republic of China where Portuguese is co-official with Cantonese make up the Lusosphere a term derived from the ancient Roman province of Lusitania which currently matches the Portuguese territory south of the Douro River Mirandes is also recognized as a co-official regional language in some municipalities of northeastern Portugal an estimate of between 6,000 and 7,000 Mirandese speakers has been documented for Portugal. According to International English Proficiency Index, Portugal has a high proficiency level in English, higher than in countries like Italy, France, or Spain. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Education. The educational system is divided into preschool for those under age 6, basic education 9 years, in three stages, compulsory, secondary education 3 years, compulsory since 2010, and higher education subdivided in university and polytechnic education. Universities are usually organized into faculties. Institutes and schools are also common designations for autonomous subdivisions of Portuguese higher education institutions. The total adult literacy rate is 99%. Portuguese primary school enrollments are 100%. According to the Programme for International Student Assessment PISA 2015, the average Portuguese 15-year-old student, when rated in terms of reading literacy, mathematics and science knowledge, is placed significantly above the OECD's average, at a similar level as those students from Norway, Poland, Denmark and Belgium, with 501 points 493 as the average. The PISA results of the Portuguese students have been continuously improving, overcoming a number of other highly developed Western countries like the USA, Austria, France, and Sweden. About 40% of college age citizens 20 years old attend one of Portugal's higher education institutions, compared with 50% in the United States and 35% in the OECD countries. In addition to being a destination for international students, Portugal is also among the top places of origin for international students. All higher education students, both domestic and international, totaled 380,937 in 2005. Portuguese universities have existed since 1290. The oldest Portuguese university was first established in Lisbon before moving to Coimbra. Historically, within the scope of the Portuguese Empire, the Portuguese founded the oldest engineering school of the Americas the Real Academia de Artilharia, Fortificação e Diceno of Rio de Janeiro in 1792, as well as the oldest medical college in Asia the Escola Medico Cirurgica of Goa in 1842. Presently, the largest university in Portugal is the University of Lisbon. The Bologna process has been adopted, since 2006, by Portuguese universities and polytechnical institutes. Higher education in state-run educational establishments is provided on a competitive basis, a system of numerous closes is enforced through a national database on student admissions. However, every higher education institution offers also a number of additional vacant places through other extraordinary admission processes for sportsmen, mature applicants over 23 years old, international students, foreign students from the Lusosphere, degree owners from other institutions, students from other institutions academic transfer, former students readmission, and course change, which are subject to specific standards and regulations set by each institution or course department. Most student costs are supported with public money. 
However, with the increasing tuition fees a student has to pay to attend a Portuguese state-run higher education institution and the attraction of new types of students many as part-time students or in evening classes like employees, businessmen, parents, and pensioners, many departments make a substantial profit from every additional student enrolled in courses, with benefits for the college or university's gross tuition revenue and without loss of educational quality teacher per student, computer per student, classroom size per student, etc. Portugal has entered into cooperation agreements with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and other U.S. institutions to further develop and increase the effectiveness of Portuguese higher education and research. <laughs> Health According to the latest Human Development Report, the average life expectancy in 2015 was 81.3 years. Portugal ranks 12th in the best public health systems in the world, ahead of high developed countries like the United Kingdom, Germany, or Sweden. The Portuguese health system is characterized by three coexisting systems the National Health Service, Servico Nacional de Sad, SNS, special social health insurance schemes for certain professions, health subsystems, and voluntary private health insurance. The SNS provides universal coverage. In addition, about 25% of the population is covered by the health subsystems, 10% by private insurance schemes and another 7% by mutual funds. The Ministry of Health is responsible for developing health policy as well as managing the SNS. Five regional health administrations are in charge of implementing the national health policy objectives, developing guidelines and protocols and supervising health care delivery. Decentralization efforts have aimed at shifting financial and management responsibility to the regional level. In practice, however, the autonomy of regional health administrations over budget setting and spending has been limited to primary care. The SNS is predominantly funded through general taxation. Employer including the state and employee contributions represent the main funding sources of the health subsystems. In addition, direct payments by the patient and voluntary health insurance premiums account for a large proportion of funding. Similar to the other URA countries, most Portuguese die from noncommunicable diseases. Mortality from cardiovascular diseases CVD is higher than in the Eurozone, but its two main components, ischemic heart disease and cerebrovascular disease, display inverse trends compared with the URA, with cerebrovascular disease being the single biggest killer in Portugal, 17%. Portuguese people die 12% less often from cancer than in the URA, but mortality is not declining as rapidly as in the URA. Cancer is more frequent among children as well as among women younger than 44 years. Although lung cancer slowly increasing among women and breast cancer decreasing rapidly are scarcer, cancer of the cervix and the prostate are more frequent. Portugal has the highest mortality rate for diabetes in the URA, with a sharp increase since the 1980s. Portugal's infant mortality rate has dropped sharply since the late 1970s, when 24 of 1,000 newborns died in the first year of life. It is now around two deaths per a 1,000 newborns. This improvement was mainly due to the decrease in neonatal mortality, from 15.5 to 2.4 per 1,000 live births. People are usually well informed about their health status, the positive and negative effects of their behavior on their health and their use of health care services. Yet their perceptions of their health can differ from what administrative and examination-based data show about levels of illness within populations. Thus, survey results based on self-reporting at the household level complement other data on health status and the use of services. Only one-third of adults rated their health as good or very good in Portugal Casmal et al., 2004. This is the lowest of the URA countries reporting and reflects the relatively adverse situation of the country in terms of mortality and selected morbidity. Culture Portugal has developed a specific culture while being influenced by various civilizations that have crossed the Mediterranean and the European continent, or were introduced when it played an active role during the Age of Discovery. In the 1990s and 2000s decade, Portugal modernized its public cultural facilities, in addition to the Calouste Gulbenkian Foundation established in 1956 in Lisbon. 
These include the Belém Cultural Center in Lisbon, Sarav's Foundation and the Casa da Música, both in Porto, as well as new public cultural facilities like municipal libraries and concert halls that were built or renovated in many municipalities across the country. Portugal is home to 15 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, ranking it 8th in Europe and 17th in the world. Architecture. Traditional architecture is distinctive and include the Manuline, also known as Portuguese Late Gothic a sumptuous, composite Portuguese style of architectural ornamentation of the first decades of the 16th century. A 20th century interpretation of traditional architecture, soft Portuguese style, appears extensively in major cities, especially Lisbon. Modern Portugal has given the world renowned architects like Eduardo Suto de Mora, Álvaro Siza Vieira, both Pritzker Prize winners, and Goncalo Byrne. In Portugal, Tomás Tavera is also noteworthy, particularly for stadium design. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cinema. Portuguese cinema has a long tradition, reaching back to the birth of the medium in the late 19th century. Antonio López Ribeiro, Antonio Reis, Pedro Costa, Manuel de Oliveira, João César Montero, Edgar Pera, Antonio Pedro Vasconcelos, Fernando López, João Botelho and Lionel Vieira, are among those that gained notability. Noted Portuguese film actors include Joaquim de Almeida, Nuno López, Daniela Rua, Maria de Medeiros, Diogo Infante, Soraya Chaves, Ribeirinho, Lucia Manas, and Diogo Morgado. Topic. Literature Portuguese literature, one of the earliest Western literatures, developed through text as well as song. Until 1350, the Portuguese Galician troubadours spread their literary influence to most of the Iberian Peninsula. Gil Vicente c. C. was one of the founders of Portuguese dramatic traditions. Adventurer and poet Luís de Camos c. wrote the epic poem Os Lusiadas the Lusiads, with Virgil's Aeneid as his main influence. Modern Portuguese poetry is rooted in neoclassic and contemporary styles, as exemplified by Fernando Pessoa Modern Portuguese literature is represented by authors such as Almeida Garrett, Camilo Costello Branco, Ica de Queiroz, Fernando Pessoa, Sofia de Melo Brainer Andreessen, Antonio Lobo Antunes and Miguel Torga, particularly popular and distinguished as José Saramago, recipient of the 1998 Nobel Prize in Literature. Cuisine <coughs> 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 Portuguese cuisine is diverse. The Portuguese consume a lot of dry cod in Portuguese, for which there are hundreds of recipes. There are more than enough bacalhau dishes, over one for each day of the year. Two other popular fish recipes are grilled sardines and calderada, a potato-based stew that can be made from several types of fish. Typical Portuguese meat recipes made out of beef, pork, lamb, or chicken include cozido a portuguesa, feijoada, frango de churrasco, lateo roast suckling pig, and carne de porco a alentejana. A very popular northern dish is the arroz de cerebolo rice stewed in pig's blood or the arroz de cabadela rice and chicken's meat stewed in chicken's blood. Typical fast food dishes include the francesinha Frenchy from Porto, tripas a moda do Porto which is also a traditional plate from Porto, and bafanas grilled pork or prego grilled beef sandwiches, which are well known around the country. The Portuguese art of pastry has its origins in the many medieval Catholic monasteries spread widely across the country. These monasteries, using very few ingredients mostly almonds, flour, eggs and some liquor, managed to create a spectacular wide range of different pastries, of which pasteis de Belém or pasteis de nata originally from Lisbon, and ovios moles from Aveiro are examples. Portuguese cuisine is very diverse, with different regions having their own traditional dishes. The Portuguese have a culture of good food, and throughout the country there are myriads of good restaurants and typical small tasquinas. Portuguese wines have enjoyed international recognition since the times of the Romans, who associated Portugal with their god Bacchus. Today, the country is known by wine lovers and its wines have won several international prizes. 
Some of the best Portuguese wines are Vinho Verde, Vinho Alvarinho, Vinho do Douro, Vinho do Alentejo, Vinho do Dao, Vinho da Barada and the sweet port wine, Madeira wine, and the Moscatel from Setúbal and Favaios. Port and Madeira are particularly appreciated in a wide range of places around the world. Music Portuguese music encompasses a wide variety of genres. The traditional one is the Portuguese folk music which has deep roots in local costumes having as instruments bagpipes, drums, flutes, tambourines, accordions and small guitars Apart Portuguese folk music other renowned genre is fado, a melancholic urban music originated in Lisbon in the 19th century, probably inside bohemian environments, usually associated with the Portuguese guitar and saudades, or longing. Coimbra fado, a unique type of troubadour serenading fado, is also noteworthy. Internationally notable performers include Amalia Rodriguez, Carlos Paredes, José Afonso, Marisa, Carlos do Carmo, Antonio Chainho, Mija, and Madredias. In the classical music domain, Portugal is represented by names as the pianists Artur Pizarro, Maria João Pires, Sequera Costa, the violinists Carlos Damas, Gerardo Ribeiro and in the past by the great cellist Guithermina Sugia. Notable composers include José Viana da Mata, Carlos Seixas, João Domingos Bomtempo, João de Souza Carvalho, Luís de Freitas Branco and his student Jolie Braga Santos, Fernando López Graca, Emmanuel Nunes and Sergio Azevedo. Similarly, contemporary composers such as Nuno Malo and Miguel de Oliveira have achieved some international success writing. In addition to folk, fado and classical music, other genres are present at Portugal like pop and other types of modern music, particularly from North America and the United Kingdom, as well as a wide range of Portuguese, Caribbean, Lusophone African and Brazilian artists and bands. Artists with international recognition include Dulce Pontes, Moonspell, Baraka Som Sistema, Blasted Mechanism, David Carrera and The Gift, with the three latter being nominees for a MTV Europe Music Award. Portugal has several summer music festivals, such as Festival Sudoeste in Zambuhira do Mar, Festival de Paredes de Cora in Paredes de Cora, Festival Vilar de Moros near Camina, Boom Festival in Adana a Nova Municipality, NOS Alive, Sumal Summer Fest in Aracera, Rock in Rio Lisboa and Super Bach Super Rock in Greater Lisbon. Out of the summer season, Portugal has a large number of festivals, designed more to an urban audience, like Flowfest or Hip Hop Porto. Furthermore, one of the largest international Goa trance festivals takes place in central Portugal every two years, the Boom Festival, that is also the only festival in Portugal to win international awards, European Festival Award 2010 Green and Clean Festival of the Year and the Greener Festival Award Outstanding 2008 and 2010. There is also the student festivals of Queima das Fitas are major events in a number of cities across Portugal. In 2005, Portugal held the MTV Europe Music Awards, in Pavilhão Atlântico, Lisbon. Furthermore, Portugal won the Eurovision Song Contest 2017 in Kiev with the song, Amar Pelos Dua, presented by Salvador Sobral, and subsequently hosted the 2018 contest at the Altis Arena in Lisbon. <laughs> Visual arts. Portugal has a rich history in painting. The first well-known painters date back to the 15th century, like Nuno Goncalves, were part of the late Gothic painting period. During the Renaissance Portuguese painting was highly influenced by North European painting. In the Baroque period Joana de Bidos and Vieira Lusitano were the most prolific painters. José Malhoa, known for his work Fado, and Columbano Bordalo Pinheiro who painted the portraits of Teofilo Braga and Antero de Quental were both references in naturalist painting. The 20th century saw the arrival of modernism, and along with it came the most prominent Portuguese painters, Amadio de Souza Cardozo, who was heavily influenced by French painters, particularly the Delanis Robert and Sonia. Among his best-known works is Cansao Popular a Russa e o Figaro. Another great modernist painters, writers were Carlos Botello and Almada Negreros, friend to the poet Fernando Pessoa, who painted his Pessoa's portrait. He was deeply influenced by both Cubist and Futurist trends. 
Prominent international figures in visual arts nowadays include painters Vieira da Silva, Julio Pomer, Helena Almeida, Joanna Vasconcelos, Julio Sarmento and Paula Rego. Sport Football is the most popular sport in Portugal. There are several football competitions ranging from local amateur to world-class professional level. The legendary Eusebio is still a major symbol of Portuguese football history. FIFA World Player of the Year winners Luís Figo and Cristiano Ronaldo, who won the FIFA Ballon d'Or, are two world-class Portuguese football players. Portuguese football managers are also noteworthy, with José Mourinho and Fernando Santos being among the most renowned. The Portugal national football team, Seleção Nacional, have won one UEFA European Championship title, the UEFA Euro 2016, with a 1–0 victory in the final over France, the tournament hosts. In addition, Portugal finished second in the Euro 2004 held in Portugal, third in the 1966 FIFA World Cup, and fourth in the 2006 FIFA World Cup. At youth level, Portugal have won two FIFA World Youth Championships in 1989 and 1991 and several UEFA European Youth Championships. SL Benfica, Sporting CP and FC Porto are the largest sports clubs by popularity and by number of trophies won, often known as Os Trace Grandes, the Big Three. They have won eight titles in the European UEFA club competitions, were present in many finals, and have been regular contenders in the last stages almost every season. Other than football, many Portuguese sports clubs, including the Big Three, compete in several other sports events with a varying level of success and popularity. These may include roller hockey, basketball, futsal, handball, and volleyball. The Portuguese Football Federation FPF Federação Portuguesa de Futebol annually hosts the Algarve Cup, a prestigious women s football tournament that has been celebrated in the Algarvian part of Portugal. The Portuguese national rugby union team qualified for the 2007 Rugby World Cup and the Portuguese national rugby sevens team has played in the World Rugby Sevens Series. In athletics, the Portuguese have won a number of gold, silver and bronze medals in the European, World and Olympic Games competitions. Cycling, with Volta a Portugal being the most important race, is also a popular sports event and include professional cycling teams such as Sporting CP, Boavista, Clube de Ciclismo de Tavira and União Ciclista da Maia. The country has also achieved notable performances in sports like fencing, judo, kitesurf, rowing, sailing, surfing, shooting, taekwondo, triathlon and windsurf, owning several European and world titles. The Paralympic athletes have also conquered many medals in sports like swimming, boccia, athletics and wrestling. In motorsport, Portugal is internationally noted for the Rally of Portugal, and the Ixtaril, Algarve circuits and the revived Porto Street circuit which holds a stage of the WTCC every two years, as well as for a number of internationally noted pilots in varied motorsports. In equestrian sports, Portugal won the only Horseball Pato World Championship in 2006, achieved the third position in the first Horseball World Cup organized in Ponte de Lima, Portugal, in 2008, and has achieved several victories in the European Working Equitation Championship. In water sports, Portugal has three major sports, swimming, water polo and surfing. The country also annually hosts one of the stages of the World Surf League Men's Championship Tour, the Mio Rip Curl Pro Portugal in the Supertubos Beach in Peniche. Northern Portugal has its own original martial art, Jago do Pau, in which the fighters use staffs to confront one or several opponents. Other popular sport-related recreational outdoor activities with thousands of enthusiasts nationwide include airsoft, fishing, golf, hiking, hunting and orienteering. Portugal is one of the world's best golf destinations. It has received several awards by the World Golf Awards. See also Index of Portugal-related articles Outline of Portugal Notes <laughs>